open our public consultation uh, this morning for Monday, December 14th. And um, <coughs> so our first report is um, report number 2230 from the Chief Financial Officer regarding our amended financial plan bylaw number 4473 2020 for discussion. Councillor Kemp, move second. Councillor Earl, all in favour? Opposed, carried. And before we begin, I just want to make one comment that uh, for people that are viewing this morning, um, with the public health orders in terms of masks and social distancing, uh, council are protected by uh, the um, plexiglass barriers. So when we are at their desks, they are adhering to the requirements under the public health order. And um, obviously, we wear our masks when we're um, out and about. Uh, besides that, but just just so folks do know that we are. Um, adhering, uh, the city are to adhering to those public health orders as required. So, um, so anyway, if we can now move to our report, uh, Flavia. Good morning. Uh, so this report uh, is uh, relates to the amended budget for 2020. Um, back in March and April this year, when we are ready to finalize uh, the, the budget, uh, the whole COVID thing came. And uh, at that time, Council decided to keep it, that original budget. And as, the, um, as we are going through the year, we would understand what the impact of COVID through the original budget and adjust. So the goal of this report is mainly to revise the numbers. Uh, we kept uh, um, the revenue from property tax based on the, the COVID relief, a lot of the relief plan uh, through the year that council um, approved is reflect on this. Uh, we reflect temporary layoffs that happen. We reflect revenue reductions due to the closure of the facilities um, and also the receipts of the, the grant, uh, the restart uh, plan COVID grant that we received from the province and federal. So they are all reflected on these revised <coughs> numbers. So, uh, and the reason that we are also present, we are, we are not uh, forced to by the legislation to do an amendment budget, but because of the significance of some of the uh, reductions that we had on revenue um, and also for certainty we decided to then do a revised or what we call amended 2020 budget so if you have any question I'm available to answer thank you Flavia Councillor Parzal in your report we have recommendation one and we have recommendation three where's recommendation two disappeared the three I thought I had two. It's only two. <laughs> Should be two. Let me. So it's just a, a type. Yeah, of error. I think must okay. be a typo Thank because you. recommendation one is the three readings, mm -hmm. and then the recommendation two is the adoption. So yeah, I'm sorry That's okay. for the typo. <laughs> Thank you. Any comments, questions for council? Flavia, the uh, so if we can just walk through a couple of things. So the uh, we waived that penalty, the normal penalty of ten percent. July 1st to help, uh, first of all, residents. Uh, we went to 2% uh, in August, September, October, November, December. Can you say, can you tell us if there was any major impacts to the collection of revenue on the residential side as a result of that transitional penalty that we uh, changed? Yeah, so uh, interesting enough, the, the penalty extension and the reduction through the months uh, caused the reduction of the average penalties we normally receive it. So through the year we get around 200,000, 197,000 and this year because of the extension uh, it went to 141,000. Uh, the collection averaged about 98.5 at the end of uh, June or beginning of July and as of now we are 96.6%. So when we went on the, the year through, we didn't know what would be the impact. Like I said, there are some cities that they are still struggling. They are at, at the 60-75% collection. So it was actually, I believe, favorable, the extension. We could see a significant uh, uh, collection for business just beginning of October. So 
the, you could see the, re the, the business um, group really hold on, try to use their money in the best way, but they came and paid uh, on the due date when it was applying. So, yeah, I think uh, the whole strategy helped the community to pay, avoid penalty, and still we collected significantly reasonable. One of the worries we had was the issue of whether we would collect sufficient amount of revenue during that period of time that may put us in a cash flow issue of uh, not having the money uh, on July 1st, but the, the collection the of both a residential and a commercial and major industry then did not impact our cash flow no. and operations. No, and then actually on the deadline that we need to send the collection for Peace River Regional District, uh, we had reasonable funds from the collection, so we are able to pay on time. And then by the end of this year, we have the portion of the school uh, that we also be able to, to pay uh, on time and uh, without any risk on our cash flow. Good. Any other comments, questions? And so end of year, uh, the uh, flow now has got us to a point where uh, our accumulated surplus that we'll carry forward, uh, we're still in a fairly uh, positive position considering everything we went through in 2020. Yeah, comparing to what we projected, we are short uh, almost half a million, uh, but we are still sending surplus. Uh, in this report, actually, I dedicated a portion of uh, the surplus that will be generated by the 50% of the restart grant. I separated and I restricted the uh, reserve <coughs> until the year end out that is finalized, so then I can come with a proposal where we can allocate it for a reserve, but we are, we are not carrying deficit, we either with all the things that happen through the year. So the 2.79 million that we received from the provincial government as a result of the COVID relief will go into uh, the planning for 2021 and we care for, carry forward a small surplus uh, as a result of operations for our 2020 budget. Yes. Good. Thank you, Flavie. You're welcome. Good. Anything else for Council? Yes. Go ahead, Councillor Parzal. Just relating to this relief fund, I don't know if... Uh, the city's planning on sending a newsletter out, but um, I would say the general, not the general, in that public from the point of view of numbers, but there are some folks out there who are wondering why we aren't using that money for things immediately. In other words, they, they don't seem to understand that what things we extra cost the city incurred, what extra expenses, so how we're we applying it and why we're not spending it stuff on, let's say, needed, needed infrastructure things. They have no idea of it. Similarly, there was one uh, uh, Facebook comment that received some circulation, and I'm hardly ever on Facebook. I am on it occasionally, but uh, people talking to me, wondering why Fort St. John got so much more money. They don't seem to realize how that money is even being calculated. Okay. So I just wonder if that's worth making mention of either an, when we send out the occasional correspondence or on a city Facebook post. through you, Your Worship, we can do that. I mean, there are a number of things, whether it be the grants we receive through the year, communities, there are formulas that they utilize to determine. So Fort St. John has a higher population, uh, for example, they get more money under the PRA agreement as well, based on assessment, based on that. So it is not unique to Dawson Creek, Fort St. John per se. The provincial government has for uh, as long as I've been involved, uh, going back to the early 90s, it had formulas that they utilized based on population, growth, assessment, and so on. So that would be why the numbers are different. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. I, I, I Just for the people that I are understand. eagerly listening here this yes, morning, yes, I'm sure. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were giving me a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you could put it back on Facebook, because I don't go on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> any further discussion, comments? So we need recommendation one. Councilor Parzal. I move that report number 20-230 from the CFO, the 2020-2024 amended financial plan bylaw 4473-2020 be received. Further that 
2020-2024 amended financial plan bylaw number 4473 2020 be given first three weeks. Thank you. Well, oh, sorry, Brenda. Um, this is a public consultation, so the report needs to be received within the regular meeting of council. Oh, okay. I wondered about that because I was looking and saying, wait a minute, we have mm. we have to call for comments as a public consultation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll just um, refer this to the uh, open. Yeah. Thank you. Do we need a motion to refer to the open or is it in? It'll be in open. It's thank in you, open. Brenda. Um, so thank you. No correspondence or delegations. So we'll call for a first time for any comments. And for a second time, any comments? And for a third time, any comments? Thank you. So we'll now close the uh, public consultation and uh, move to our regular meeting of City Council and uh, we'll call the meeting to order. Our first item this morning is our delegations and um, as a result of uh, the restrictions in terms of being able to have uh, the public into uh, council chambers. We're going to deal with the 2020 Community Awards now um, in order that we can um, announce the uh, sponsorship of those awards and the um, nominees and the winners. So uh, the Community Awards really began about four or five years ago in uh, direction of council and we award them at the end of every year and uh, with those nominations and criteria that were approved by council four or five years ago. It really is the opportunity for us to recognize uh, those dedicated citizens and businesses and volunteers and entrepreneurs that help uh, build our community and provide that great quality of life. The first award uh, that we provide, present is the Youth of the Year and this award is sponsored by the Dawson Co-op. We really appreciate the co-op's uh, support of uh, the community awards. The nominees uh, for this year were Gwen Hawkins and Kendall Stark. The recipient of the award is an exceptional youth in the community. Each year she holds fundraising and spirit events to support uh, the Because I Am a Girl Foundation to provide food security, support, social support, and medical access to girls around the world. She is a mentor and role model to her younger peers, an inspiration to all around her, and an exceptional member of our community, well deserving of the recognition. Uh, I want to offer uh, our congratulations on behalf of Mayor and Council and the community. Congratulations to Kendall Stark. <laughs> and we will get the awards to the uh, winners um, uh, after the uh, presentations and the, uh, nom the recognition this morning. The Entrepreneur of the Year uh, this year is uh, sponsored by our Dawson Creek, uh, sorry, the South Peace Community Futures. Recipient of the award is always promoting her business. Her enthusiasm and determination to push through COVID, despite COVID-19 is what makes her deserving of this award. Our congratulations go to Whitley Hodak. Um, and the Business of the Year is sponsored by the Dawson Creek District Chamber of Commerce and the nominees this year were Community Futures, Peaceful Yard, Coffee and Kitchen Number 9, the Dawson Creek Medical Clinic, and Mountain View Safety Services. The recipient of the award has been open uh, for over a year now and the business is doing exceptionally well. Delicious home cooked food and the friendliest staff around. The business deserves this award because of all the hard work and dedication the staff puts forward in their work every day. Congratulations to Cafe Number Nine. Um, and the Inclusive Workplace of the Year, which is sponsored by the Dawson Creek Society for Community Living, the recipient of this award goes to an organization that employs a group of individuals with disabilities from the Dawson Creek Society for Community Living to take care of their janitorial needs twice per week and have been doing so for more than a year and a half. Not only is their building accessible to people with disabilities to pursue and shop, it is also very accessible for a variety of individuals with disabilities to work there. Congratulations to the Dawson Creek Art Gallery. And the Citizen of the Year, which is sponsored by the City of Dawson Creek. The nominees are Dr. Remy Oyeji, Meredith Thornton, Stephanie Goody, Rod Cork, and Karen Wozniak. 
The era of COVID-19 has brought to the fore the importance of all our healthcare workers to the community. These people go out of their way, risking their lives to make sure we are, are all healthy. The recipient of the award is appreciated both in the medical clinic and in the Dawson Creek Hospital. He offers professional service, good, side, good bedside manners, good listening skills, and doesn't rush his patients out of his office. I want to offer our congratulations to Dr. Remy Oyeji uh, as this year's Citizen of the Year. It's very cool to see Dr. Remy recognized uh, when he, he and his uh, wife and family uh, moved to Dawson Creek about four or five years ago. Uh, they were just ecstatic to be here and moving into the medical clinic, taking over the clinic, uh, I think, for Dr. Pilgrim's practice in there and done a great job and I uh, really appreciate uh, that uh, he's been uh, recognized as the citizen of the year this year. I'll take him out for dinner one day. Uh, um, so thank you to the uh, staff and everyone at City Hall who helped uh, put that together. Our next order of business this morning, new councillor business, uh, 3.1, we have councillor Dover. Um, I'm not sure the proper way to do this, but um, I just wanted to dis see if we could discuss the aquatic center, the hours and the fees that we're charging there. I just had a few comments from citizens that you know, one, that the hours are just a little complicated, and then also just the fees are, I know they were brought down because of COVID, but um, just wondering if it's time to revisit that. And I know the hours just got extended, I think, or they're being extended in the next week for swim time. So I just felt it kind of made sense to, to look at the fees. And, um, and it's a pretty affordable thing already. Like I think to take a family of six there right now is $10, which, you know, for a couple hours entertainment seems a little um, too affordable. Um, so yeah, so I don't know, like is there something formal I'm supposed to? So have you uh, look to move forward to the recommendation that you <coughs> want council to uh, bring back uh, or administration to bring back a report recommending that we return to the previous fees that were reduced prior to uh, COVID? Yeah, that and maybe visiting the hours, like I find and right now they're closed Thursday and Friday, but like Friday is kind of a big day for families. It's the end of the week, and it's usually a day that people are looking to do something with their kids after school. And um, it's also most non instructional days are Fridays. So for me, like as a parent, it would make sense that the pool's open on Fridays. Um, and if it needs to be closed, maybe it's closed a different day during the week, or maybe we look at going back to seven days a week and, and offering the full service. So you're making a motion that council would uh, direct administration to bring back a report moving, returning the fees to pre-COVID fee structure and revisit the hours. Sounds perfect, yeah. Okay. Do I have a seconder that we, Councillor Earl? Go ahead, Councillor Earl. Uh, just a question, Your Worship, for my own uh, recollection. I know when we reduce the utility fees, we put a sunset clause on that for the beginning of, the, that it's set to expire at the beginning of 2021, did we do anything similar with the pool fees or are they for the foreseeable future? It, through your worship, there was no sunset clause on them. Um, when the report was brought forward right now, I think council made the decision, I'll just, and we'll bring the report back. Thursdays and Fridays were chosen based on the usage, uh, previous usage over the last number of years, but I mean, doesn't mean we can't reconsider that. The issue of opening to seven days a week versus the five uh, was twofold uh, due to the COVID. We wanted to start the facility and get it operating to see how it could be handled. <clears throat> the other is certainly a cost factor. The recovery right now with less than, uh, well, 50 people uh, being allowed in the building, the cost recovery on that facility is probably well under 10%. Uh, so the cost is very significant. So we will capture all of that in the report though should this motion pass mm. and bring it back okay so we'll um, a motion is to bring it back under mayor's business for the, we would direct administration to um, pursue that and bring a report back to council with the c options and the impacts of uh, considering the return of the fees and the hours so to bring it back under mayor's business Brenda uh, was there a seconder to the yes councillor Earl any further discussion, Council? All those in favor? Opposed? 
Chair. Thank you. Uh, other councillor business? Councillor Wilbur. Thank you. Um, I haven't been on Facebook much myself lately, but I, I was on there last night, and I actually just want to give a shout out to um, Natasha Cortez from uh, Restoration Vintage Love, Vintage Restoration Love. Sorry, Natasha. Um, but she's been doing a personal campaign just promoting local business, local entrepreneurs, and, and shopping local, and she's doing that over and above running her store and all the things she does. So I just wanted to give her a shout out and uh, say thank you, Natasha, for promoting Shopping Local this season. And I hope everyone's listening. And uh, we have some really great eclectic businesses and shops. And as we've seen through the community awards, so uh, not often Natasha gets credit and she's always out there promoting everybody else besides her own business. So I just wanted to give her a little shout out, thank uh, her for doing that. And uh, again, folks, shop local. At every dollar that you spend local, 75 cents of it's gonna stay right here. So uh, those businesses have seen us through COVID. They're still struggling and uh, we need to keep them open. So the saying goes, buy local or it's goodbye local. So do that, spend your money smartly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further Councillor, Councillor Parzal. Yes, uh, we, we've been concerned about well, at least I, I know I have, I'm sure those of you in the know have been equally concerned about the cash flow situation at the Mile Zero Park uh, due largely to COVID and some capital expense. Um, there was some difficulty about the grant that uh, was awarded by NDIT to the Mile Zero Park Society because of the adjustments that had to be made because of COVID. Basically, the service station project was um, going to be built by the students of Northern Lights College. Uh, they had to uh, withdraw from that because of COVID, but the uh, credit must be given to the instructors at the college who stepped up and uh, did all the did all the work as volunteers mm -hmm. um, but that led to a little issue and thanks to the skill of the and background knowledge of the grant writer uh, we were able to uh, uh, put forward a good case to NDIT and they uh, acceded to the variance that was needed and the uh, Mars Zero Park Society received it, the, its grant of $41,000 plus dollars, uh, about a week ago, which uh, was of great relief to the wow. society. So thanks to the grant writer, Northern Lights College instructors, and to NDIT. Thank you. Good job. Uh, Councillor Business, any further? Thank you. Minutes. Uh, so 4.1, we have the minutes of our regular meeting of City Council of November 23rd for adoption. Move, Councillor Wilbur. Second, Councillor Kemp. Any errors or omissions in the minutes? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. And we have the minutes of our special meeting of Council of December 4th, 2020 for adoption. Councillor er, uh, Kemp, sorry, Councillor Earl, Councillor Kemp. Any errors or omissions? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried, thank you. Is there any business arising out of the minutes? For anyone? Administration, anything? Nothing, no? your worship. Thank you. Uh, correspondence 6.1. We have a letter from Joe Golotsky, uh, Shotgun and Youth Director at the Dawson Creek Sportsman Club, looking for a letter of support uh, for uh, grant funding to construct an indoor pistol and rimfire shooting range. Councillor Earl? Uh, I move that we provide said letter of support for them. Thank you. Second, Councillor Kemp. Discussion? All those in favor? Oh, sorry, Councillor Parzo, did you want to speak? Just ba basically, um, just for full disclosure here, I'm actively involved with the club. I have been facilitating all the 10 year plan, uh, but I have no <laughs> financial gain at all. But I do have, from the point of view of my club membership and my role in it. Uh, very active involvement, but one of the driving forces for me is something that has been a concern, I think, for the council over the years, is that there's a lot of money left on the table uh, for in our region for NDIT, and I've been, I think I have to give credit to Mark Rogers, former councillor who really 
started it and I've tried to continue advocating for application and so this will be, if we are successful, a significant grant Good. that would fund half of this cost. But I want to take note, the goal is for this club to be the only club that has a uh, qualifying gun range and this 10 year plan is really heavily about bringing people in from other regions. It's heavy, I guess, sports tourism yeah. focused and um, we've had some wonderful support uh, from um, Larry, uh, Larry, volunteer stuff, donations, Larry Moody and I must give a shout out to uh, the old guy whose name escapes me right now former sergeant, uh, former candidate for the Conservative Party. Um, Kirk, Kirk Peets. Kirk Peets oh, just okay. gave wonderful support through his excellence with drones and aerial photography and so on. Okay. It's just great. Awesome. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Sorry. Opposed? Carried. Uh, 6.2, we have a letter from Marla Reed, Executive Director of the Dawson Creek Society for Community Living, requesting grading and snow removal for 102nd Avenue. Councillor Parswell? I'm on the board. So I think you, you have to, to yeah, I think so. Okay. You need masks as well. Oh, yes. Thanks for looking after me. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Nice city logo. <laughs> So the request that we have from uh, the Society for Community Living is to request for grading and snow removal for 102nd Avenue Alley. And um, obviously we have a policy that we don't maintain alleyways and things. Do we, can we have a motion to receive for discussion first so that Blair can give an update? Councillor Wilbert, Councillor Kemp, all in favor? Opposed, carried. Blair, can you speak to the policy? I will get Kevin uh, to Kevin? jump in here shortly. But yes, our policy is not to uh, grade uh, our alleys and it has been that way for many many years um, these facilities that are being asked to have this done in their alleys are I think go back to the late mid to late 90s I think as to when they were constructed so up until this point I am guessing that uh, they have had private individuals plow that for them um, there would be a cost to the city to incur should they consider doing this uh, but Kevin, I would ask you to add anything further if you can. Yeah, good morning, Your Worship. Um, so I had Devin take a look at just kind of what uh, the request might entail. Um, as Blair noted, uh, winter we don't grade or plow snow in, in really any lanes in the community other than in the downtown a couple times a year just as necessary. Uh, summer grading, we try and get through every lane in town at least once. Um, but looking at the request that you have in front of you, um, there would be additional grading because they're asking for kind of a monthly um, response to that. So there'd be some additional hours there, plus any materials that might be um, required, gravel and such. Um, and then the snow plowing is probably the bigger challenge um, simply because when you get into back lanes there's really nowhere to put that snow because you're usually up against um, fences or other properties so um, in this particular case you might end up having to actually remove and haul which really drives the cost so um, collectively we're kind of estimating that this could be as much uh, well actually ten thousand dollars or more um, as a request um, depending on materials and, and how much snow you get but kind of as a as a minimum we would expect at least ten thousand dollars annually thank you Kevin Councillor Javeco so these lots uh, the city used to own the lots and when community living came and asked about uh, partnering with the city because they wanted to build these facilities we donated the lots to them and I don't believe there's any taxes uh, from the province that we get for these and they are a provincial facility so as far as I'm concerned this is a provincial issue um, you know I don't know who's been doing the plowing for the last 25 years but it was probably the province and I think they should continue thank you further discussion further comments councillor Wilbur 
Um, through you to staff, there is access to this parking off Main Streets, right? It's not like the only access is off of the alley. So through your worship, the, the uh, parking for most of these, you have to go into the laneway and then enter. The, they don't have anything off of 102nd Avenue access. Those units across from uh, the mini mall uh, are all have their parking in the rear off the alley. Yeah. There's no front street parking other than street parking there. Blair? Your Worship, j just one thing to add. When this was in its infancy stages and being discussed, as Councillor Javakov said, this issue was raised uh, that the parking and the design was from the back and that the alleys weren't maintained. So uh, that's 25 years. I was part of uh, the Council at the time. Um, but just so this is not a surprise. I think this is just an ask coming from them to see if there's a willingness So thank you Blair. Council Motion Councillor Javaka. I'll make a motion to receive for information. Thank you second Councillor Earl All those in favor Opposed it's carried. Thank you. Can we have Councillor Pars look back? No <laughs> <laughs> So we have item 6.3, we have a letter from uh, Karen Crosby, a local resident, regarding uh, requests related to the uh, sewage backup uh, experience uh, by herself and other residents. So perhaps, again, maybe a motion to receive for discussion. Councillor Javekoff, Councillor Dober, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, Kevin Blair, can you give us an update on the area that um, Ms. Crosby lives on? And all right, sure. Thank you, Your Worship. Go ahead, Kevin. So through Your Worship, um, just in regards to the specific location in the in the letter in front of you, um, that is just off of uh, be west of Eighth Street, um, the hundred and sorry, I, I think they're in the hundred fifth, hundred sixth area. Um, with the uh, the work the Ministry of Transportation is doing uh, for the Eighth Street Bridge. As part of that will be a new sewage lift station that is going to be constructed or is actually constructed right by uh, Cal Tire, just on the um, south side of 107th Avenue. So that lift station is going to uh, essentially protect that area of, of the community from the trunk main, which is on the other side of the creek, south of the creek on 110th. So what is causing these backups in the community primarily is that the trunk main is getting overwhelmed with uh, rainwater infiltration and is causing backups into various areas. So by installing this lift station as part of the bridge, that is going to create a mechanical, um, essentially a check valve from the trunk main to this part of the community and will therefore um, protect it. So I believe that with when that work is completed, um, a lot of these issues that in this particular location should be resolved and uh, will be headed in the right direction. So we saw during the, I'm not sure if it was the June or July event where there was a manhole around 9th and 104th maybe just off of the old um, kind of medical clinic in that right in that corner there and it was bubbling up and so the pressure coming down 8th Street on that main line then was causing, because it was hitting that 110th uh, 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 line, was causing it then to just pull back into that area. So that one that uh, manhole you're, you're speaking of there is a storm manhole. So that would be strictly okay. just rainwater. And that on occasion when you get those really intense thunderstorms, we have storm sewers that uh, will just simply can't take it. Um, and they will come up through manhole lids okay. and like that. Um, in this case, it's the sanitary. And typically, um, the sanitaries are affected um, more adversely when we get those long duration events like we had in uh, mid-June or the 1st of July when we get those long rainfalls that have significant amounts of moisture. Uh, the thunderstorms that um, happen relatively quickly with large amounts, although they do affect some areas generally most of it goes overland 
and you'll see that um, storm sewers where they they can't take it or you'll just get overland flows Kevin is there any way so I know we've got your report um, later on in uh, the sanitary sewer or the uh, sanitary sewer master plan is there any way to so the the only way that we'll know when that lift station that bypass at Cal Tire at the creek is going to uh, resolve the issues for Cros the Crosbys and other residents in there is when we have an event, um, really, um, that of magnitude. Is there any way to put a, um, a a way to protect them to in the in that interim period to so until we experience an event or two to to protect them from having another event? I guess my worry is we have we have the system in place we believe is going to resolve it for them, but if if it doesn't. Um, then they're going to get it again, right? Yeah. So, so through your worship, what we know, and again, all this is driven through uh, the modeling that uh, our consultants are doing, and they look at all the inputs and all the data, and and, and um, the mechanical, the lift station is going to cr create a mechanical barrier, and so that's what we do know is when that's up and running, and that will be uh, sometime in 2021 because they're going to start. Uh, construction of the bridge and they need to commission that lift station before they do that we know for a fact that that will um, create that barrier between the trunk main and that neighborhood without a doubt um, what that lift station will not control is is if there is additional um, inundation from somewhere upstream or something like that so um, we know it's going to deal with that one issue though um, all our modeling is telling us that is driving a lot of these backups okay so the lift station will resolve uh, the magnitude of events that we've had for them. Mm -hmm. It just, if you had a, a major event, um, nothing is gonna, there isn't any system that you can build to protect from that. Yes, I, I hazard to say it's gonna solve all problems forever because we just don't know yeah. what, like you say, there will there's a possibility of an event that is beyond yeah. um, any of the infrastructure that we may have. Sure. Thank you, Kim. Councillor Parzal. So is there any way of ensuring that this uh, pump, this new lift station will be operational prior to the spring runoff? Uh, through your worship, I would have to check and see what their anticipated timelines are. I know they have, um, you know, the lift station, the tank is in, the pipes are in and stuff. I, I don't believe they have any of the electrical... Uh, or the pumps themselves, that I'd have to check on and to see what their anticipated uh, commissioning date is. As it, it's, a, it's a ministry project, so I just don't have that in front of me. Yeah, I'm just wondering if we can put a request in and then they get on with this. <laughs> yeah, Blair? Your Worship, I think the one thing is Council has made, uh, obviously, this issue a priority for this Council. We will do what we can to do it. This is a number of years in the making. This is not a solution that will be presented and solve every issue in 2021. We will do our best, but this has been many, many years in the making and it will take a number of years to get the full correction. We are looking at ways, uh, these are horrendous events for individuals. Uh, when they face this, we are looking at ways we can uh, hopefully ensure that we can mitigate any impact until all of the uh, work on the sanitary sewer is completed, but as I said, I don't want to leave the impression that this will be resolved in 2021. This, uh, we will do our best, but it has taken a number of years um, to get to this point, and it's going to take some time to repair it all. Yeah, I think honestly, it's a, you, to me, that you've got a long-term strategy that we need to put in place to ensure that we build a system that helps alleviate some of those pressure points. and. And to me, is there a short-term solution that we can impo Im implement in some way to ensure we do our best to protect those that we know have those hot spots impacted by uh, these sanitary issues? And that's, I guess, what I'm thinking is you get the aspect of that's a long-term uh, plan that we're going to have to put in place. It's going to be expensive. It's going to take some capital and planning and prioritization. But is there a way that we can ensure that we put some short-term process in place to help alleviate some of that pressure that some of these residents have faced. We we will do our best to, to yeah. do those for yeah. sure. And uh, they're in the process already, including some that have been completed this fall. Sure. So. Yeah. Councillor Parson? Yeah, I appreciate what staff just, just said. Um, but you know, I remember 
when I first came on council, uh, we received a master sewage plan and uh, the trunk line the north of the Alastra Avenue was going to be a major, major part of that and that was done, done quickly. But the, one of the problem areas was the Chamberlain Drive, just uh, around the 15th Street area, west, I guess, of, and uh, a, uh, a lift pump uh, was put in, uh, legacy, near Legacy Mark. Uh, and it's my impression, to be corrected if need be by the staff, is that that, that solved the problem there, right? It seems to be. I have, don't recall any issues since then. So these lift pumps can do some real assistance to designated areas. So that's why it would really, if we got all that stuff in there, surely they can do the electrical in the next four months. But I hate this area to be inundated again when it just took, takes a bit of effort to put the electrical in. That's, that's my point. I would think if it is doable, I know Kevin will uh, reach out, and if it's possible to have that done, uh, that would be for sure. Okay, yeah. so, um, and we, do, we will deal with it, uh, as I say, so, uh, we've got the sewer, sanitary sewer master plan update later in our report, so we can have some further discussion about that at that point. Um, Crosby's have made a specific request of council, and so we'll put it to council. Councillor Wilbur? Receive for information. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Javekov. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Councillor Earl? Um, I was opposed. opposed? Yes. Sorry. And so I've got Councillor Earl opposed and um, Councillor Parsons opposed? No, no. I'm going to okay. support the motion, but I just want to make a comment. Go ahead. Um, uh, we, we, will, we will have some response, so a written response sent to this person. Um, Your Worship, we so... We just receive it for information. What what next? Are we just trying to say thank you? Council received it for information, da da da? And is that Traditionally, it? that's historically that's what Council has done. So not, when yeah. Council okay. receives for information, it means that no action will be taken. We will clarify that to the individuals that it was received for information, which means uh, to let them know for sure. I met with Karen and uh, her husband uh, probably th at least two or three times for sure. And um, and so I have no quite, no hesitation. We'll, we'll f I'll follow up with her. It's just important yeah, to do that. For sure. Councilor, sure. That, that was my reservation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that it was just nothing on the other end after yeah. sending what I thought was a, a well-worded, thoughtful letter. We are adjusting, so as councils historically, a receive for information means council does nothing. So we have sent letters back thanking people, saying we've received for information, it leaves a very vague uh, understanding of what that means. We are correcting that uh, on behalf of council to say that a receive for information means although nothing will be done, they've addressed the you know, talked about your issue, we'll make sure they're aware. Okay. Yeah, that was We'll follow it up with, I certainly have no hesitation talking to Karen and Ronnie as well about it. Councillor Wilbur? Um, I just want to make note of other letters of similar topics have also been received for information, so yeah. not to set precedent of one aside from the other, that was why I made my motion. Yeah. Council sets a direction, so. Um, 6.4, we have an email from Peter Julian, Member of Parliament. Uh, request to endorse Bill C-213. Councillor Parzal? I'd like to move that we do endorse Bill C-213. I'll explain why if I get a second. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Wilmer? Go ahead. It grieves me that one in four Canadians are unable to afford filling of their prescriptions or renewing their prescription. I've, I've always been a, a strong believer in a universal pharmaceutical support uh, from a federal provincial partnership and I'm uh, pleased that the NDP is uh, in introducing this legislation. Thank you. Further discussion? Further comments? Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. 
6.5, we have an email from uh, Cheryl Graff, a resident of Dawson Creek, regarding a request for an audible signal be installed at Alaska Highway and 15th Street Crossing. Councilor Earl? Received for discussion. Thank you. A second, Councilor Kemp. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I know I'm familiar with the crossing she's referring to. I, I walk my dog there often, and I can't say I disagree of, of the various crossings in town. It's one of those ones where you really do have to uh, make sure the, the motorists note you're passing or note you're there. Um, and it's, it's uh, visibility is not terrible, but there is uh, usually some snow and cars parked along the way that do uh, make for a challenge. So I wouldn't be opposed to seeing some sort of uh, report back from council as to what the cost of this would be what kind of timeline? So this is Alaska Avenue, so it's a Ministry of Transportation okay. uh, crossing, and so we will be lobbying, if Council approves it, we'll lobby to go to the provincial government and the ministry to install the uh, audible signals at that crossing okay. on Alaska Sorry, Hi Avenue. Yeah. Councilor Parsla? Uh, for me, this, this letter prompts, again, not since uh, Blair's been CAO or anything like that, but I just want to remind Council that I met through the uh, good services of a lady called Margaret Sutton with a group of people who are visually impaired or visually challenged. I sent a, a note to staff, not the people on staff right now, but somebody else who used to be with us, about the, um, the various suggestions that were being made by this group. Um, one simple suggestion, for instance, uh, was would be if you think about these gentle slopes uh, from pavement to road, uh, for people who are visually challenged, seeing the depth, right, is a real challenge for that. But there's a simple remedy. There's uh, a paint that you, you put on, right, which shows through the ice, and that's their trigger. But I haven't seen anything no follow-up on this. I, I can read, there, there's a, there was a number of suggestions, this was one of them as well, um, that audible cues, right, for people who are visually challenged at key intersections. There, there were a couple of other suggestions, I don't know, uh, I could always get hold of Margaret Sutton, but there were about four. This was one, the colour stuff was another, and I, I oh, Another one was um, having, uh, where you have parking stalls, you know, where you have, uh, you drive in. Uh, it would be helpful if we had in each block one that was wider for handicapped people because when they, they often they transported in vans for wheelchair lowering and so on. That was another of the three. Then I'll get hold of mine to see what the others, but I, I don't, I'm not aware of any action on any of these. Has there been some that I've missed? No? Okay. So we'll... Uh, not that so I, I just wonder if we can take a more comprehensive view of this uh, as, as we do things or as we paint things. Uh, yeah. So perhaps as a, um, behind this, once we deal with this one, we'll uh, bring that forward and um, have some a direction to administration. Councillor Wilbur? Um, I was just going to say, I think in our downtown core, though, we did make some adjustments where we brought, at the intersections, we brought the sidewalks out. We did make some bigger uh, handicapped parking stalls at um, certain areas downtown. So I think as a community, we're being very inclusive about accessibility. Um, this is a bad crossing, Alaska and 15th, oh, yeah. but I also think of 17th. So I think... In how we, however we move forward with this, then possibly those discussions with staff and the MOTI is that all of their major arteries that run through our community, um, are we being completely inclusive of accessibility for people in our that we have in our community that may be visually impaired? Or um, I know uh, Mr. Gibson, we always hear from him lots about the timing of the lights, right, in the winter and being able to get across safely. So I think it's more than just this intersection. I think it's having a conversation with the provincial government on all of their 
you know, major crossings and those arteries within our community. Somebody is going to get hurt badly or killed in some of these intersections just because traffic doesn't always stop or they try to run the yellow light or exactly as Councillor Parslow has said, they can't see the depth perception um, to step down and get across the street in timely. So, I mean, I, su I support this request 100% and, and hope as a whole we'll move it forward to have that conversation. Okay. Was there a motion in there? I think there, there was. There is a motion. <laughs> well, we do have a motion uh, uh, on the floor to receive for discussion. So uh, we haven't anything further behind that yet. So I would like to move, can I make that motion yep. then? I would like to move that staff um, engage in conversation with the ministry regarding crossings on major, major arteries and putting in maybe some sound systems or visual um, aspects for accessibility. Is that clear? So, uh, so for all crossings uh, on Alaska and 8th Street, uh, Modi uh, controlled intersections that we engage with them to install audibles at each of them? I, I think so. I know we did the walkabout and the transportation master plan and I think this all fits into that. Seconded, Councillor Parslow. Discussion? Um, and so the one, the only reservation is if we go out, and I, and I completely agree with it, but I don't want to miss um, if we go with six of them, the ministry say, well, it's not in our budget this year and they delay it and so nothing happens to Cheryl's request then, 415. We could ask them for a five-year plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Uh, well, we could identify this as like number one, and and you know, okay. seventeenth could be number two. So maybe that's part of that conversation. I I, ha I have faith in staff that they'll be able to sure. identify those major areas. Okay. All right. Anything further, council? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Just a question. If yeah. I may. Go ahead. To staff. Sure. In, t in the de those roads that we're responsible for, isn't there an audible crossing at uh, downtowns, or am I getting... 103rd and 10th, I think, is. Yeah, I'm it sure that I was walking in yeah. town the other day. I think 100, is it's it uh, Miles Zero Post, 102nd? Yeah, through your worship, both of our, are the city-owned uh, traffic signals in the downtown, both at 102 and 103. We installed audible signals, oh, more than 10 years ago. Yeah, oh. yeah. And that's also where we extended the sidewalks. Good. Oh. Thank you. 6.6, .6, we have a letter from Chris Richards, President of the Dawson Creek Chamber of Commerce, uh, regarding the request for the, to support the Chamber regarding the government's commitment to engage in local uh, business. And um, perhaps we can have a motion to receive for discussion. Councillor uh, Wilbur, Councillor Parzal, all in favor? Opposed? Carry. Um, so we've had two separate issues that have arisen um, and I'm doing some work with respect to the uh, major projects on our doorstep that uh, Coastal GasLink and the Wild Lake Compressor Station and uh, under the Environmental Assessment Certificate they indicate the um, commit to engaging and supporting opportunities for local uh, and uh, Indigenous businesses uh, impacted directly by the um, projects and um, the company through their uh, process uh, and obtaining the permit make that commitment that they will create and ensure that they uh, provide those opportunities to local business and uh, residents and training and other things and um, and so the chamber have um, obviously written to us and um, indicating that they're seeing um, very little in reaction to that from local businesses who aren't feeling the impact that was committed to under the project. And then the BC Building uh, Corporation uh, affordable housing site and uh, Blair and I have been doing some work on that and clearly they uh, really dropped the ball in my view in terms of us providing the property. $200,000, $250,000 in the value of the land and next to nothing in terms of local um, business or local contractors being involved in the, um, with the prime contractor on it. So uh, this is a really important, I think, um, important message from the Chamber about us uh, demonstrating we need to hold these peoples uh, who are responsible for these projects accountable for the commitments they make. <coughs> Councillor Wilbur? 
I completely agree, but I also want to put out there that Councillor Parslow talked about NDIT and our local businesses need to get on that supplier chain that NDIT has. Um, but I also know that some of these uh, projects that are happening, local companies were hired. So some people are working and I know that because uh, through my work we train people to work for those companies to get their tickets to become employed. So I know for a fact 36 people were employed by one company for contracts that they got through the government and other businesses that are coming into town to build. So as much as I feel the pain, I'm the biggest champion for shop local and hire local. Um, we also got to market ourselves and so we maybe need to do some due diligence and uh, maybe Councillor Parzel could get us some information from NDIT on the supplier chain, but that's where they're looking and that's where they're hiring and those businesses that are on that are seeing some response. So yes, we need to have those conversations and yes, I encourage everybody coming into our community to hire local, but local people, we also got to market ourselves. So if there's an opportunity, please take advantage of it and get your name on those lists because part of it is, um, we have to do some due diligence ourselves as well. So there are things happening, maybe not for everyone, but at the same time, the ones that are marketing themselves that are getting on um, the lists are getting hired, so. So I spent about a week on the phone with local businesses, um, probably eight or 10, and uh, I've come up with two that have been able to get any part of Coastal or uh, Wild Lake, and, and just they're just, not being uh, working their way through. And I, in fact, I reached out to the contractor and said, I'd like to introduce you to uh, three or four of our local businesses. And uh, the response I got was, well, if anything, there, there is nothing that those companies offer, can offer to us that would uh, find our way that we would require those services at this point. But if anything ad hoc should come up, we will get a hold of them. Well, in my view, we're not gonna stand on the side of the road waiting for a contractor to throw a pop can out that we can take to the recycling depot that will help the economic benefits to our local businesses. That's not what this is about. This is about them making a commitment under the environmental assessment certificate for the permit to the provincial government for the uh, permit to construct these projects that they would engage local uh, businesses and residents. And in my view, reaching out and the chamber have said that, there we got business sitting idle. So anyway, I just think it's an important message for us to continue to push forward. Councillor Earl. Uh, thank you, Worship, and I, I agree with your sentiments. It's disappointing to see, um, you know, a big part of, I guess people you use the word social license comes from the fact that there's going to be some economic development that goes along with that, and that's our goal. Uh, with respect to this particular letter, is there an ask? Are they asking for uh, the endorsement of their sentiment? Are they ask? I just want to know, is there a motion? We can yeah, I think they're just saying, look, there, we've got businesses sitting uh, idle and um, wanting us to be supportive of that. So I put, I put some material together. I am going to uh, put a uh, email to the uh, Assistant Deputy Minister of Environment on the Environmental Assessment Certificate. And uh, I'm going to move that forward and I'll use this as one part of that. I have about four or five other letters from local businesses who have also written to me expressing concerns. So part of economic development that you guys asked me to do is mm -hmm. to be able to take that role on and that's exactly what I'm going to do. That's your job. So do you want a motion of support for the... I, I, mean, I think we should express to the Chamber that we support their sentiments for sure. and we're, yeah. we're working hard to uphold companies to their, to their promises. For sure, and I think that's an appropriate response to the Chamber that we are going to take okay. that approach. So move. Thank you. Second, Councillor Kemp. Any further discussion? All those in favour? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Um, we have uh, 6.7, 6.8, and 6.9, although they're uh, all identified as a separate piece of correspondence, they all deal with uh, a, exactly the same issue in regards to uh, concerns raised by local uh, residents, seniors, uh, with the a new $2 uh, charge that's been imposed on utilities. So we'll deal with the first one, 6.7, but as I say, I think 6.8, 6.9 are all uh, the same issue relating yeah. the same uh, concern. I move for discussion. Sure. Councillor Parzlo, second Councillor Kemp. All in favour? Opposed? Carry? Yeah, go ahead. I should know this, but uh, do we bill bi-monthly or is it monthly? Bi-monthly. Right, so there's six, so this is a $12 a year. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, we, certainly, we've had a couple of I've had a couple of reach outs and have responded that um, postage, envelope, stationery, staff time, uh, all as a cost to the city, and that's it's this isn't a, a grab of revenue that we're trying to do. It's recouping the costs that the organization, the community, the city goes through <coughs> in order to process the bill and. If you've got to print this bill and put it in an envelope and put a stamp on it, there's a cost to that. Or if you push a button and it sends it electronically, the costs are completely differently. And, and so I think this is a very difficult and sensitive issue, obviously for seniors who all three of them have expressed no computer, no cell phone, no ability to get an electronic bill. Um, and certainly I completely appreciate that. And that's not the issue for us. The issue is this is a cost for the city that we incur. So. Council, Councillor Jackoff, and then Councillor Dobler. Yeah, I can appreciate uh, you know some people not having access to computers, but uh, I think the intent here is is to use mm -hmm. use this as a catalyst to to get people that do have computers to sign on to the um, <coughs> digital invoices. So, you know, I think it's a worthwhile project, and uh, I would hope to see that we'd be ninety percent signed on here eventually. Councillor Dober, then Councillor Earl. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I think it's part of the times is going to electronic, but you know, I part of me feels bad for people that are on a fixed income. Like our pension plan is not a lot of money, so twelve dollars a year might not sound like a lot to us, but to those that get nine hundred dollars a month or whatever it is, twelve dollars is a lot. Like every penny counts to them, and I don't know how you make an exception to you know somebody that's you know ninety plus that's doesn't have access to this stuff like I, I don't know what the solution would be but you know my heart's definitely with them and I, I understand and um, you know if there's I don't know how you could go about helping them it, yeah it's tough because um, you know I think electronic is the way of the times and it's the way we we need to be there um, but I don't know how you make exceptions for yeah I don't know Thank you. Councillor Earl and Councillor Parzel and Councillor Dweckel. <laughs> Thank you, Worship. <laughs> I'll try and be brief. Um, I, I, I appreciate the engagement from residents who are concerned about this. Um, I, I do know pretty much every other utility bill you receive now, whether it's hydro or gas or your telephone or even financial statements have gone online. So as Councillor Dober noted, I think it's the way of the future and we need to be, given that there is a $50,000 a year cost to the taxpayer in mailing out paper statements. I do think we need to be diligent. Um, I also note that we um, currently, and it may be difficult for senior citizens in particular to find their way down there at the moment given the COVID restrictions, but we do fund a public library that has access to internet for those who, who do need them. Um, and there are a number of other programs, I think, in town with, which would help seniors um, or those without access to computers get them. I realize uh, there might be mobility challenges as well getting around. And, and if there is a way to uh, work with those few residents that this absolutely won't work for, I'm, I'm happy to explore it. But I do think for most residents, as Councillor Javetkoff noted, the goal is to get I think uh, Flavia noted when we first began this discussion that currently we have about 10% of our residents signed up for e-billing. Um, our hope in, in doing this is that we can not only uh, reduce our expenditure by $50,000 a year, but to um, yeah to increase that so that we're uh, not you know we we've undergone so, some challenging financial times and we're currently in the midst of some and this is one of those instances where we're trying to be diligent in looking under every rock for every penny and uh, I appreciate it's not uh, every every initiative we undertake isn't going to work for everyone and uh, well, we're certainly sensitive to that but uh, I still do uh, think this is a worthwhile endeavor. Thank you. Councillor Parcel? Well you know, there's a, a variety of ways of solving this. As you know, I uh, getting older as well, well, and I'm finding I sometimes get challenged by technology. So those people who don't have computers, 
must uh, really feel frustrated uh, because everything's going that way. If we take all the, uh, so we have a cost of fight, $50,000 associated with uh, mail out of, of utility bills. Um, so if we want to try to help those uh, who are challenged by our times, our technology, or, or money, we could spread that 50000 out to all the utility payers. Um, they are going to help out the less fortunate. Um, so if it, we have how many utility uh, bills go out here? Uh, about two or three thousand? Mm -hmm. uh, around three thousand. There's five thousand yeah. households. Three thousand, I think. Three thousand. Hmm. Divide five thousand by fifty thousand by three thousand. Fifteen bucks, sixteen bucks. Sixteen bucks a year. So that's one alternative, right? We we increased our utility bills to cover the cost and therefore uh, help those who are struggling in our time. That's that's one way. Isn't it possible uh, for these people to arrange for prepayment through a financial institution? Yes, it is. It is. So there's another alternative. I mean, but, but then would the credit union, just not speaking because I'm a great credit union fan, uh, but would the credit union leverage a charge for that sort of practice? For a senior's account? No. So maybe that's a, they could be pointed in that direction. I'm just trying, I always yeah. try to find a win-win alternatives, but I mean, my heart goes out to those who are struggling financially, the elderly, for sure. I'm sure it does for every one of us here. Mm. Um, but can we help? Them, uh, point them in the direction of working through their financial institutions. You Worship, are? just I think the one thing that would happen there is the individuals impacted by this, even if they had a direct, would not receive a copy of their bill. Many, uh, many times the seniors I've dealt with in this discussion uh, ask that question, how would I get the bill? How would I know? I don't have a computer. Uh, you're still going to mail it out even though and then the charge is still there so the bank is not in a position to hand people individual copies uh, of what was extracted so it's a bit of a challenge I will point out this is new council just dealt with this within the last two months uh, three months uh, this is going to become effective on January 1st so it hasn't kicked in yet just for Councillor refresher Councillor Jebekwa I'll make a motion that we uh keep our the process that we've established and send letters to these three individuals explaining that uh, the reason that we're doing it and all the benefits to the city thank you do I have a seconder councillor earl discussion go ahead councillor earl um i just hope whatever letter we send also mentions that they can't access the internet free through the local library we can include that in yeah. the response most certainly <laughs> thank you Councillor Dover, then Councillor Wilbur. I kind of like Charlie's comment about splitting the cost amongst everybody. And, you know, as 90% of the people get online, that cost is going to be way less than 50000 a year. So it might only be $2 per year for each citizen. But I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, un, I completely understand and completely for moving forward uh, with what we're doing. But I, I'm you know against it for these seniors that it, it's affected and yeah we have the public library but we're in COVID times where we're telling them not to go out in public and not to do things and and like Charlie said lots of them are just afraid of the computers and don't know it so yeah that's my opinion thank you Councillor Wilbur then Councillor Jovekov <laughs> Um, I, it wasn't an easy decision that we made to charge the two dollars but realistically by the time you buy an envelope and a stamp that pretty much eats up your two dollars but I just wanted to make the comment that I, I do feel it's not just seniors it's people on fixed income and the landlord probably now charges them that two dollars for getting a paper bill however we pay administration fees on many utilities that we bills that we receive outside of the city we just don't see it and so I, I think we've done it well in being transparent and saying starting January 1st this is gonna you know you're gonna get charged two dollars if you get a paper bill we're paying it we're paying it on our hydro our gas all our bills that we pay somewhere in there is an administration fee it's been calculated into the price it's just not listed separately as a line item 
twelve dollars is twelve dollars and that does mean a lot to somebody that can mean a jug of milk and a loaf of bread and, and I get it and we have to budget but at the same time um, we hear it over again to be fiscally responsible and so it's it's user pay and if we want paper bills I like my paper bill and I will pay the two dollars because I like to have the paper bill I'm one of those people that likes to see the bill I like to file I like paper so I'm willing to pay the two dollars and so I have to budget for that um, but it's not a punishment it's not that we're trying to make a hardship for someone it's literally covering the cost of what it takes to send out that paper bill Councillor Javeco yeah this is a business decision I don't see it as a social deci That's decision right. at all uh, it's a business decision we're here to try and help set some policy to run the city and uh, you know we have our financial constraints we're trying to move millions of dollars out of operational costs to capital and this is one of the things that we've decided that we would do everybody's doing it all the businesses are doing it the the uh, banks I don't know if the credit union is doing it but I'm getting charges all the time if I want to use a credit card they're charging me two or three percent extra if I want to get a hard copy bill they're charging me extra so this is just a sign of the times. It's a business decision, not a social decision. Yeah, no, I, so I completely uh, understand that the uh, affordability metric for these folks is uh, gets them to the point where, when do they reach that point they can't stay in their home? When did they get to that point about not being able to pay to stay in that home and then they move into uh, the other components of housing and things like that? that just make it all that much more expensive and so I have no problem with the analysis that we've done and how we uh, got that uh, but this is a segment of our community uh, demographics of our community that uh, we um, you can't help but say this isn't business this is about seniors this is about people who build our community and so we all I think feel that pain right of having to make that decision it's tough any further discussion Councillor Kemp? I was just thinking also, like, maybe in the letters that they mentioned, you know, they can call the utility departments and speak to someone who can tell them what their bill is and stuff. It might be another option for them, you know, if they don't want to go out. And stuff. I, I think, and Flavia, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe they can do that and we can share that information. We still have to develop uh, a bill, whether it is the paper, paper bill or the electronics. So, um, you know, and hopefully, as was mentioned, that you see the evolution of people signing up to the electronic bill reduce that cost, and uh, then it reduces it that much further down. And after a year, hopefully, we have 60 or 70 percent of the people signed up as well, right? So, any further discussion? You ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Councillor Dober opposed. And. Um, your Worship, just for clarity, yeah, was that for six, seven, six, eight, and six, nine combined? Is so, that how you we dealt with 6.7, but it's, I think, it was the intent that the discussion was all three of them were exactly the same. Concert, I directly. included uh, all three, three? yeah. Okay, just a clarification on the mover and seconder of the motion. Uh, Paul moved a second. Thank you. That, that was for discussion, no. Nope. Uh, that we oh, uh, established. The we established the letter. Sorry. Yep, I have it. Thank you. It's a lot of discussion, Brenda. Don't yes, do I that know. to me. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on top of us, Brenda. <laughs> Sometimes I forget if we voted. <laughs> <laughs> and that will be for six, seven, six, eight, and six, nine. Thank you. Uh, six point uh, ten. We have a letter from Garth Frizzell, the president of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Councillor Parzel. I move that we continue membership and pay the invoice. Thank you. Do have a seconder? Councillor Wilbur, discussion? I'd like to speak to... Go ahead. Um, he cites in his letter the unity in numbers. Uh, Lavia can give you the exact figures, but one of the examples of, of the leverage that you get through a, a lo strong lobby group, a unified lobby group, is the gas tax, right? And... Um, I think that gives us, uh, was that about $500,000, the gas tax? Oh, I'm getting confused. Gaming grants. Was Ga about half gaming grants. Was it, what about the gas tax? Didn't we get 
two increments of that uh, from the Fed? Uh, yeah, recently? last year. Last year was about one point. Uh, yes, one point two million. One point two million. Just an example, right? Uh, something that the various municipalities put forward, endorsed it as a principle, pushed it with the federal government. So, there's a one good example of of, of supporting a national organization working for the causes of municipalities. Thank you. Further discussion? Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, report 7, report number 2232 from the General Manager of Community Services regarding the 2021 budget uh, reductions for the Dawson Creek uh, Public Library. Councillor Wilbur? I'll move that it be received for discussion. Thank you. Second? Councillor Kemp? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Go ahead. Um, thank, I'm, I'm doing catch up at basically, so I'm going to leave it to staff to kind of give an if update. Your Worship, maybe I could clarify. So this was part of the budget discussions that Council had and the direction that was given uh, with regard to the library budget. There was also a motion that a report be brought back to Council. That's what this is. This has been accomplished. Uh, Ross and I met with the library. Uh, they, upon their initiative, found the revenue reductions that were asked for. This really just relays that that has occurred because there was a motion uh, formally put before Council and adopted that a report be brought back and it hadn't been until this point. So it's really for information. This has been dealt with in the budget already. Thank you, Blair. Ross, anything further on that? No, uh, I think you're correct, Blair. We did have a meeting. The uh, manager of the library came back with these uh, productions on our, at our request, and I think satisfied uh, our direction. Thank you. Uh, anything further then? We don't need a, We don't need any um, direction on it at all. It was uh, received for discussion and good. Uh, thank you. 7.2, we have report number 2234 from the City Planner regarding the request for a subdivision fee reimbursement at 90019 Street. Councillor Parzal. I move the report 20-234 from the City Planner. We request for subdivision fee reimbursement at 90019 Street be received. Further, Council Direct Staff to reimburse the $275 subdivision application fee to Roy Northern. Thank you. Second. Councillor Dober, discussion? Just for clarification, this is a property on that uh, pie sheet piece of property just off of um, 17th Street on 90th Avenue, Blair? It, and 19th, yeah. right on 19th yeah. Street, the corner there. Yeah. And this PNG has a little uh, yeah. compressor yeah. station, metering station there. Yes, and yeah. apparently, so back when this subdivision was developed, uh, it was thought that that had been excluded at the time and obviously it had been missed. Okay, thank you. So I was just cleaning up the uh, yeah. miss. Uh, cor correcting a mistake. Yes. yes. Yeah. Good. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. 7.3, uh, we have a report number 2223 from the General Manager of Development Services regarding requests for proposals for the 2020-44 Consulting Services. Councillor Parsel. I move the report 20-223 from the General Manager of Development Services. We request for proposals 2020-44 consultant services be received. Further, Council award RFP 2020-44 consultant services to Urban Systems for a five-year term commencing December the 18th, 2020 and expiring December the 31st, 2025. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Earl, discussion? Kevin, do you want to give an update on the proposal and the RFP? Yeah, sure. Through your worship, we'll give you a little bit of background of, of what we did here and why and, and what the outcomes were. Um, so traditionally, we haven't had a, a formal process um, to solidify who we were going to work with as, as consultants. So we've... We've used urban systems a fair bit in the past. We've used other consultants like KWL for sanitary sewer, um, Opus for um, drainage master plans, and, and different ones for transportation master plans. But we've never had a process to 
to a, a public process that we went through to select a consultant that we would use uh, for a select period of time. So uh, we decided to do that. We put out an RFP um, and to solicit interest. We received nine submissions from various consulting firms. Um, we had three staff independently score those submissions based on the matrix that we had in the RFP. We took the top three, uh, and then we asked those top three to present uh, to a group of uh, senior staff why they should be the ones that we um, recommend to council. So we had the top three, which was um, Urban Systems, uh, Associated Engineering, and WSP. So we had those presentations uh, from them later in uh, late November. And uh, upon completion of that, we, as a group, um, decided that Urban Systems was by far the, you know, the best fit for the city of Dawson Creek moving forward. And so that's why we're recommending that. Uh, essentially, the top three are all very, very capable of providing engineering services for the city of Dawson Creek. What we were looking for in that uh, presentation was to determine what what were maybe some of those added value features that, um, you know, they could provide for us. And so, like I say, urban systems, uh, definitely, we all felt uh, brought that to the table. Um, they indicated that if they were successful, they would open an office here in Dawson Creek, which I think is critical. They'll staff um, uh, up to four people here. Um, in Dawson Creek again, which is I think is a, a real bonus for us. Um, they certainly did their homework and looked into you know what this council strategic plan is. They understood um, you know obviously the PAR, PRA agreement and what we're doing with that. Um, they talked about the ability to mentor and assist with mentorship with uh, some of our staff, which they've done in the past. And I, I use the example of Kevin Swales. Um, as he was an EIT, um, there has to be a mentor and oversight from a <coughs> professional engineer, which uh, they did uh, for him during his time here uh, at no cost to us. So there was all those types of aspects that they brought um, that the others just simply didn't uh, touch on or even... Um, contemplates. So again, that is why um, we're recommending moving forward with uh, urban systems. And, and Ross was part of that uh, group that was in the presentations. I don't know if I missed anything, Ross. If I did, feel free to add to that. Yeah, thank you, Kevin, for your worship. Uh, it became, well, it was clear right off the lot that uh, urban systems is very, very familiar with our business. I think the fact that they were involved with very, uh, preparing the initial PRA agreement uh, fits well with what we are trying to accomplish. So they're, they've got uh, very significant in-depth knowledge, knowledge of that. Um, there were a number of value-added options that uh, we haven't necessarily asked for, but asset management comes to mind. Uh, they've been involved with strategic planning. I know I've worked with them on a number of different projects over the years, and, and again, I think uh, it was pretty much hands down in our group uh, when we met that they were going to provide the uh, most value for the city. Thank you. Councillor Dover. Um, is there a, um, a savings to commit to five years? Like with the, the consulting fees? Like regular, obviously we're using different consultants so there's fees with that, but yeah. is it by committing to somebody for five years, um, is there a, a savings? So three your worship, where the savings, so, so I'll, I'll back up and say that um, most or all consultants will charge um, as per the, you know, a pretty standard, they're all very comparable as far yeah. as their rates. And so I've had some discussions with Urban Systems about what those are, are going to look like. And, and so when we're doing capital projects, there'll be a percentage that they'll charge on the value of, of the project. So we'll know going into it what we're going to pay for consulting fees, and those are very comparable. Um, on a typical uh, road project, for instance, um, it'll be about 10%. And of that 10%, that'll be everything from assisting with budget, uh, conceptual, uh, design, tendering and construction management of that project. That'll be about 10% of the project value. 
and that's pretty typical across the board. Where we will see uh, savings will be more so internally, um, as opposed to having to go through uh, RFPs and tenders maybe for consultant services over the next five years, we have the ability to have a relationship with one consultant firm. And uh, so staff time will be, um, we won't have to be going through that process on a regular basis. So that will certainly free up some time. Councillor Giovacco. Um, so is there a timeline for their office? Let's start an office here. So they have uh, a place already rented. They have an office space. So um, they've got that going. So as soon as it's awarded, they'll have some presence. And that was certainly something that they talked to us about is that they see themselves of, as being part of the community. They want to be involved in the community as a whole, not just with the city of Dawson Creek, but with the community out there. And they get involved and have been with service groups. So, um, and then once they have, like I say, they have that office space rented, then they've committed to actually opening up an office. So. And the 10% fee or, or estimate, is that on the uh, bid, the final bid? Yeah, that's uh, on the cost of the project. So, so the actual cost, yeah. not not the estimate. Yeah. Councillor Parzel. Yes, this would be funded through uh, a charge to our capital, right? The consulting yes. stuff, uh, which uh, and because we're embarking in our planning, at least on a fairly aggressive uh, capital project scheme here over the number of years um, this makes makes sense I have to declare right because I, I I know the principal here who of urban systems in our region who I totally admire uh, so I know we're getting somebody at the helm who exudes integrity and professionalism so I, I'm just sharing that that my I, I mean, you scored it independently, and, uh, but I know we're getting someone at the helm who I, I totally admire, and is, in, and I'd say if, if they say they're going to be part of this community, they will be, um, in a variety of ways, uh, things that they do that I know of, uh, behind the scenes. So they're they're a good group, led very well, and. Um, I think uh, having this sort of continuity over the years will lead to, uh, uh, I guess, uh, what we, what's the term that we use? Uh, a lot of symbiosis between staff and and constant players, and uh, so I like the five-year aspect because of that. I think that will lead, have all sorts of intangible spin-offs. Cool. Further discussion. So two things for me, and I, I, and I also really like the idea of them uh, having an office in our community and being a part of our community. And I think that should be a condition of the contract that says if you're going to be in our community, I don't want them opening up an office to get the contract and then two months later they close it down and come back uh, yeah. and servicing it out of uh, Fort St. John or Prince George or wherever. So I, I really believe that should be a piece of this. We want somebody local who uh, is going to help us develop and have a build. The other thing that I really, and this is this isn't a this isn't anything to do with urban systems. It's their uh, the, of their own success of how they built a business model that provides services. But uh, I had a, a, a wise guy once said to me one time, "You really need to ensure that you don't become a in a position where your business partners have more business expertise than you do, and that you get into a position then where you're reliant on them." Today, Urban Systems designed our water distribution system, so we don't do anything without them. And so the, the downside of being where you're locked into somebody, pretty soon you don't have any competition, and pretty soon you don't have anybody else, and then pretty soon the market is driven by them, and the costs are driven by them, and the direction because of their own expertise. That's not a criticism of them. This is just the value of what they've done in building a business model that really has been very, very successful. That's the, that's the risk that we take as an organization when you start to be reliant on one company who provides that business expertise for you. And um, so you're paying for it, but eventually you become at their mercy because they have all the business expertise. But I, that's, the, that's where we're at. 
you Go ahead, following up on your comments there, the one thing that's very important is all of the work, whether it be urban systems or, or somebody else, and in this case we'll speak to urban, urban systems, the work they've done for us over the last number of years, uh, many years, or anyone else, the information garnered in that work they've done for us is ours, proprietary, I believe, uh, Kevin. So um, the ability for us to make sure that we maintain ownership of that information that we've contracted for is extremely important, I think, as we go forward. So. Sure. Yeah, no, no. I, like To me, I, the, they've done a great job of building the expertise and the business model of providing service to municipalities and all of us in the region across the province use urban systems for all of that stuff. That's the risk you get into when you have your business partners who start to develop all of that business expertise that's outside your organization. And if you bring it inside, then there's a huge cost to that as well, right? So it's just a risk, yeah. yeah. Councillor Parson? No, that's a valid point, but uh, I heard that they were going to provide some training for our staff as well as through this process. I believe they have in the past with uh, Kevin Swales, who has left our employment. Um, but they've stepped up on that, Kevin. I would, I can't answer that question under this contract. Whether they'll, I know they'll work closely with our staff. But as far as training, mm -hmm. Kevin, on yeah. That? So through your worship, definitely they spoke to that. That that's that's an opportunity, and and they look at it as growing our staff as well as a benefit for the organization. So this one other. Go ahead, Councillor Parsons, then Councillor Jack. One point that was uh, shared with me uh, by Lair over another issue but I think maybe Blair may want to talk to this because uh, this is also very attractive to me is that this group will be responsible for making sure that we put our hat in the ring for every federal provincial funding uh, that's, that's possible so they'll be on top of that for us. Very much, and uh, to the point even before this discussion and how this vote goes, they've worked closely with the city when new grant opportunities come up. They've been working with us to ensure that we're aware of them, uh, if we have any ideas moving forward on that, so this will enhance that substantially. And they'll be putting forward the grant on our behalf, right? No, I'm not sure. They would put it forward, Kevin, or they would recommend to us and we would have to apply formally. I'm not sure. Yeah, so through your worship, I'll, they'll do basically the engineering work behind it. They'll get the uh, the grant opportunity for, for this particular 102nd Avenue that we're looking at. Um, they'll pull all that information together and get it done. Ultimately, uh, I have to sign yeah, but off as, as submitting that council has to provide a resolution, all those pieces. Um, we never lose control of that aspect. No. They're just there to assist and help. Um, and just a, of that note, um, one thing that they did bring up is that while working with the city of Fort St. John, the city um, of Fort St. John has received more grant money per capita than just about anybody else in the province. So that was one of their points of um, bragging a bit. But, uh, you know, if they can help us with that, then that's, that's certainly oh, that's, a great opportunity. So that was an important fact feature that I thought so we should all be aware of. Councillor Jovekov? My question has been covered. Thank you. And the point about the office, they, they, it's not part of the agreement. It's just they have, they've committed to renting an office, but... Yeah, through your worship, but through this process, at the very outset, we made it very clear that that was important to us, to have a local presence, and we left it to them to tell us. And there was, there was uh, points uh, that were there that if they were going to be in the community, they got more points. Uh, throughout the scoring so we made it very clear that, that was important to us and and um, so yeah that's why they're committing to to being here but there's nothing in it that says once we give them the contract that they have to be here that's completely up to council if they want to include that yeah. there's nothing at this point in time but if that's yeah, something that's, that you'd that's, like so we gave them points yeah for being here but they until they're here and they they get the contract if, if council would like to have some wording in there, I can certainly, uh, I don't think they would be opposed to that and I think they're committed. I, I do I do that, I do believe that. So um, I don't think that would be a hardship to have something in there. Your worship will ensure something's in there. Yeah. And if it becomes an issue for uh, this contract, we would bring it back to council. But as my understanding and in discussions uh, with Kevin and the team, it was clear that they were coming here, but we'll confirm, not only confirm it, because they've committed that, we'll enshrine it in the agreement. Thank you. Yeah, I just, I, this BCBC now has got me 
every time we do something, I think we make sure that we have our covered off for our community and make sure that we, our business community and our community is tied in there because this is a big commitment we're making to them for five years. Very much, right? yes. And if they score it higher because of that, then yeah. uh, that should be reflective in the agreement in my view. So a motion, we have a motion and we need an amendment then that we want to that have that included in the agreement. Councillor Parslow, second. Councillor Dover, that we just include the uh, requirement to have an office in Dawson Creek during the term of the agreement. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? On the amendment first, are you ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. And on the motion itself, are you ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. So we're at 1035. We'll uh, take a uh, seven minute uh, break. And uh, we'll be back at uh, 11.42. <laughs> Thank you. I got a partner. I would call him a partner. Back into our agenda at 7.4. And um, we have report number 2222 from the corporate officer regarding our Dawson Creek Library Board appointments. Councillor Wilbur. Sure, I'll move report number 20-222 from the corporate officer regarding the library board appointments uh, be received further that Andre Lavoie be appointed to the Dawson Creek Library Board for a one-year term effective December 14th, 2020 until December 31st, 2021. Thank you. Second. Councilor Earl, discussion? Councilor Wilbur? Well, thank you to Mr. Lavoie for stepping forward. Great guy to have. Something that's been asked to me, and I just wanted to point it out, uh, this board, I'll just use it as an example because we're on this topic. So, Councillor Camp is a liaison for Council, and I just wanted to s put it out there that we are liaisons to different boards, but that doesn't mean we're voting members. We're right. just there representing Council to bring the information back. So, it was something that was asked of me. So, not picking on you, Councillor Camp, <laughs> but it's just the topic. So, I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Um, 7.5, report number 2228 from the corporate officer regarding our community awards amendment. Councillor Earl. Thank you, Your Worship, and I'll move the recommendation that report number 20-228 from the corporate officer regarding community awards policy amendment be received. Further, that the community awards policy be amended by including the requirement to hold a current business license within the criteria of the following award categories, Entrepreneur of the Year, Business of the Year, and Inclusive Workplace of the Year, pending the required 30-day review period. Thank you. Second, Councillor Kemp, discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, 7.6, we have report number 2233 from the corporate officer regarding an offer to purchase on the Chamberlain Park encroachment. Councillor Javekov? I move the report number 20-233 from the corporate officer re offer to purchase Chamberlain Park encroachments be received. Further, that the offer to purchase from Mr. Arun Jacob were approximately 190 square meters of land within Chamberlain Park as identified on the attached map be approved in the amount of $5,700 plus taxes and all other related expenses. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Wilbur, discussion? Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. And um, 7.7, .7, we have report number 2229 from the Chief Financial Officer regarding the 2021 Financial Plan Draft 2. Councillor Wilbur. I will move the recommendation that it be received for discussion. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Kemp. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Go ahead. Um, one, I would just like to say thank you to Flavia. In my absence, it has been so easy to stay up to date and, and follow the numbers, and I really appreciate it. So I just wanted to say thank you to Flavia for making it so easy to stay up to date and, and know what's going on. So thank you very much for that. Great job. Further discussion? Councillor Parzel. I don't know if this is the 
right time. I have a, I'm having problems supporting one component of our capital budget. When would be the time to raise that? I'm not talking about the total envelope for capital, just one of the one of the items that's identified. Go ahead. It relates to the kitchen at the Encounter Event Center. Uh, that kitchen hasn't been used for all the all the upgraded <coughs> kitchen there. It hasn't been used for a year. Um, listening to medical uh, experts uh, on CBC Radio yesterday afternoon, um, I'm I'm also of the firm opinion that we won't see any use this next year, um, given that the. Uh, as they do not know whether people who get vaccinated for COVID, uh, that doesn't mean that they won't be transmitters of COVID. So I think we should put that on hold uh, at this time. I, I think we need to have in our strategic planning a, a, a full discussion about the Encounter Event Center and, and its uh, future. And and where catering might fit into that. So that's just uh, what I want to show. Okay, thank you. Blair, any? Well, it is certainly Council's prerogative. If, as we've presented the budget and the capital, uh, it is up for discussion. Anything such as Councillor Parslow has brought forward is up uh, for Council's review. If Council so chooses that they uh, would like to put that on hold, then we would look for a motion. Uh, from council uh, that would include there may be the need for a report to come back I can't tell you that if we were to put this on hold that should the facility open the uh, equipment in there is going to meet the needs that's a something we would have to delve into but I believe that anytime you have a request like this for capital it's because uh, it's reached its life expectancy but I would Ross I'm not sure if you've got anything to add on that um, but it has been part of our budget but as is the prerogative of councils as we go through it uh, to look at things and make determinations that uh, should they choose not to proceed with that, a motion would be required to withdraw that from the draft two uh, of the budget at this point. I'll start over. Are we going to have another like budget review? I, feel like, I don't know how the whole process works, but is there... Is it, yeah. I was also going to, um, just speaking to the kitchen... Um, equipment capital. I've been in the business a long time, so I was going to set up with Dustin just to no point, just to go through the kitchen and see because, um, like our kitchen equipment, you know, we replace it seven years is kind of the life, but we you know operate twenty hours a day, three hundred sixty five days a year. So I just wanted to kind of go look through everything, and it just yeah. seemed a little higher than what I'm used to. But um, but I was just wondering, like, if, if there's going to be another day where we yeah. go there. through it. So, sorry, Go sorry, ahead. Your Worship. Yes, on January 21st, the next okay. meeting, we have a draft three discussion. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah, I think to me, the uh, issue of removing it is if, um, if we uh, are opening the facility at some point, and it's my expectation it is going to be opened at some point, um, that we don't want to, we want to make sure that we have the capacity to open it. We wouldn't want to hamstring an event. Uh, that they may have the opportunity to do because they don't have the equipment to be able to do it. So I think that's an important piece of information we would need to ensure that if we're pulling uh, the capital out for 2021, that it isn't going to impact the anticipated operations for the Encana Event Center in 2021 for anything like that. Ross? Thank you, Your Worship. And just uh, clarification, I just pulled up the budget sheet here. This equipment this year are, are for replacement of deep fryers. There are three, one of which has been replaced in the last couple of years. And what we're finding in terms of life cycle management is that we are starting to spend more and more on repairs and just keeping this equipment up. So that's why. So it's the deep fryers for the uh, upstairs concessions, and I'm assuming. I believe so. So perhaps that would could be, we, we can certainly have that conversation on January 21st and perhaps that gives administration and the uh, opportunity and Darcy's uh, suggestion to be able to um, have that uh, information back from the Encana Event Center to say, look, is this uh, equipment 
critical for the operation in 2021? Uh, what does it do to us if we remove it from the capital budget? Your Worship, we will do that, and I know Ross and Darcy will follow through uh, with your um, request to have that. There are things in your capital budget that are based on a life cycle um, of the city. So there may be things that are replaced in the 2021 budget that may not have failed yet, but as Ross said, it's getting to the point where your cost of repairs are greater than replacing. So it isn't a, a definite everything that goes into the capital budget is uh, broken or done. It reaches a point in its life cycle and many times, even an example, our equipment pool for vehicle replacements. Um, it, some of our vehicles were running 13, 14 years, which is well beyond what the standard is in industry uh, for the replacement. And then your costs for repairs start to get higher than what your, your cost for a new new vehicle in that case would be but we'll bring that back for you and uh we can and again i say bring it back we'll be prepared for your discussion as uh council sure. uh, looks to the budget but it will be a you know if there are any others feel free to let us know if it's coming so that we can have all the information you need we'll do our best to have what's there i think we've got the the papers behind each of these capital requests good thank you councillor parcel yep and remember, I said I, I hope that we're going to have in our strategic planning session. I'm going to be uh, suggesting some things around the Encounter Event Centre, which is some contest with us. But I would appreciate uh, Darcy's re review of this. But just and what was the total amount budgeted? I've, I've done a, forgotten that amount. On the capital for, oh, for, the, for, for just this the kitchen? kitchen stuff, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councillor Dover. Dover. Sorry, just one thing with the kitchen equipment and stuff. Who does the repair? Like, is it the city that looks after? No, that's contracted. Like, it's contracted. Yeah, but it, is the city responsible for those contracts? Global. Spectrum. So Global oh, okay. would do those. We have an overall uh, contract with Global Spectrum to run the Encana Event Center yeah. based on a, a set amount that we give each year. They're responsible beyond that. But the capital investment and so on comes to the city because it's our, our building and our equipment. So when they're repairing a deep fryer, it's Spectrum that yes. looks after the cost of that? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Make sure I'm nodding well, the here. Cost of it. They, they, they arrange for it. Mm -hmm. It's the bills come back to the city for the actual for the maintenance spectrum. and re for the for the repair of a let's say a deep fryer. Yeah. No, that comes out of their it's through the budget. That's out of their cost. Their out of their one point five subsidy. One point six five yes. million. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Further discussion on the um, report. So a motion. Oops. So we received for discussion. We don't have any further direction that we want to provide. No. Good. Thank you. Councillor Wilbur? Um, just for you to staff, so in looking through this and we're looking through capital, so do you want us to email anything ahead of time saying we'd like to look at this ahead of that January 21st meeting? It'll be helpful. We'll have the information we need there, but I'm going to defer to the mayor who will so, chair the meeting. <laughs> so, um, I, yeah, I, I think we need to, uh, we've, um, I don't want these guys going to a bunch of work that um, if it's only, like we all can't be giving them 10 items is my worry, right? Um, I, I'm only asking, I'm just thinking if, you know, we're going to look at it on was the 21st of January, our next, budget meeting. next budget meeting, then I, it was just a, a thought, like it, I don't want to lambaste them at the last uh, minute either. Blair? Your Worship, so the 21st of, 21st of January, is it? Yes. That's our, the third uh, part of this. Most, uh, I mean, we can do anything to any budget prior to adopting our final budget as a mayor and council. Much of this discussion takes place at the first and the second and carries through as we learn. So uh, we're open to it, but this is going to be the third 
uh, part of this budget. So it, you're getting down. We started a process with so Council's wish to do it much earlier. Um, we're getting down to the point where I think it's fine-tuning of the budget now versus a, a full we, reconsideration. Okay, we, but if it's a full reconsideration, we'll, well make we just, that happen. Yeah, we just had a public consultation on the budget. And so if we start making major significant swings to it, then we need to re-engage the public ensuring that we keep the public informed on what the process is and what we're uh, doing. So, go ahead. I No, I have full confidence that my colleagues went through step one and two right. and, and got us here. But the only reason I'm asking is just because Councillor Parzel has brought up this particular item and so I'm thinking um, we'll be discussing that on the 21st. So that's the only reason I was asking. I am fully confident that everyone has got to where we are uh, by making sound decisions and talking to the public. But that was just why I'd asked because that one item was pointed out. Sure. Your Worship, I would say this if I could. Any questions of any councillors, whether it's with the operational side or the capital side, don't hesitate to either give a call, come sit in my office, send me a note. I will make sure the information is put together for you, whatever you need. Perfect, thank you. Councillor Parcel? Yeah, just, I did say also, but I was comfortable with the capital envelope. Yes, And yes. Um, when I read, you know, it was starting to get cold, so I went through all the capital items <laughs> again. Be and because they're nicely laid out, doesn't take, and the only one that I really had questions about was this one. So that's why I raised it. Perfect. No, yeah. thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, 7.8, we have report number 2235 from the General Manager of Development Services regarding the Sanitary Sewer Master Plan update. Councillor Parzal. I'd like to move the recommendation, which reads that Report 20-235 from the General Manager of Development Services re Sanitary Sewer Master Plan Update be received. Further, the Council directs staff to proceed with the following for 2021, as identified in the KWL report. 1. Additional flow monitoring in the sanitary system and model calibration. 2. Cleaning of the main trunk line to regain capacity. Pre-designed for relief sewer bypass and pump stations. Identify, number four, identify and complete some sanitary manhole sealing in critical areas. And five, identify and complete the installation of low level pump systems for some individual properties. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Earl, discussion. Go ahead. I, I um, again just re-emphasizing what has been stated, but this is a complex problem, um, and I think this is uh, obviously it can't be fixed, as you just <laughs> said earlier, in a few years. Um, and I know this, uh, the anguish of some of our residents is forefront in our minds. So this, to me, is is obviously taking the advice of people who know what they're doing, um, as well as staff. Uh, this is what's needed to move <coughs> forward as we try to solve these complex problems. The one item that I was surprised at was the need that the fact that the main trunk was not operating at capacity. And the cleaning of that main trunk was necessary. And so my question is, should the cleaning of the main trunk be done some on a regular basis? Are they recommending, like, uh, uh, this main trunk is what, eight years old or seven years old? So through your worship, the main trunk line is not the one that we just constructed oh, on 20, in 2012, okay. 2013. Uh, the main trunk is the one that's been... Uh, in the community for a number number okay. of, of years. Thanks for that clarification. So is it something that we should be doing as part of our regular mm -hmm. maintenance? So through your worship, um, it will need to be done on some sort of a regular time frame. And when I say regular, it might be every five to ten years. And, and the reason I say that is because the trunk main is... Um, it's extremely difficult to flush. It's it's something that we cannot do in house. We do not have the resources or the equipment to do so. And and there was, <coughs> we have done some in the past with uh, some contractors in a couple small areas. It's very expensive and, and uh, 
complex. Um, and there was always a, a belief that the trunk vein, because of the significant flows in the system, that it probably didn't need uh, the flushing and the cleaning uh, as often. And, and hence, I think that's why we've probably got to a point where in some areas we have some capacity issues. Um, so that's why one of the recommendations is, is we went through this with KWL. Initially, we were going straight to building some more lift stations in some select areas to protect neighborhoods. But as they ran the modeling and, and they have a more um, dynamic, accurate model process than they did in 2012 now, just technology, um, what they kept coming back to is that our system was performing or not performing uh, much like we were getting a 100-year event rainstorm, but we were only getting five-year rain events here in, in 2020. So it was correlating why we were having such significant impacts with what was relatively, uh, by all accounts, not a significant rainstorm. Although it was a good rainstorm, it, it was certainly not a 100-year rainstorm. So why were we having that? And so um, the only thing that we can come to is that the trunk line is not performing as it should. And so that is, as they call low hanging fruit, and we should deal with that initially. That's going to regain some capacity, but they also do warn in the report that that's not going to uh, solve all the problems. That's just going to get us back to where we need to be. And with some additional flow monitoring, we're going to determine what our next steps are. And we believe that there will still be possibly some lift stations or that uh, additional bypass trunk line that they're uh, identifying in the report. May I just ask the supplementary? Sure. So thanks, Kevin. So where I'm coming from is if this is, and I understand the need to do this work so that we can do the calibration of our system. If this, as this is an expensive endeavor beyond the capacity of the city, is this one of those items that we should, as you said, put on a recurring platform, let's say once every seven years, and budget for that each year so that we have the funding for that? I mean, what is the total cost? I, I forgot, was it 500000 for this? Yeah, we're, through your worship, we're estimating that it's going to be somewhere in that neighborhood of, of uh, half a million to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, could be either side of that. Um, so should this be, we set aside something each year for this uh, and identify it as such? That's just, but the rest, I have no further questions. Thank just you. that thought. Thank you. Councillor Dover. Um, I definitely, uh, this is a little bit new to me, so I might... Um, some of it might be done, but I appreciate all the things that have been getting done around the city. But to me, this is like, you know, needs to be like a top priority getting this stuff done. And I know some of it's 2021, 2022, 2023, but you know, like Karen Crosby's letter this morning about how many backups she's had. Like to me, that's a, unacceptable in the community. And um, I know we're talking about borrowing money for roads, which, you know, I also think is important, but you know, in my mind, this would be ahead of that getting it done and, you know, getting the city operating properly. Um, you know, I know there's lots of other areas in town that there's sewer problems and there's been pump stations put in and I think they've helped, but, you know, I just think I'd rather have a pothole in front of my house than sewer backing up. Um, it, to me, this, you know, if I was to prioritize what's important for the city, this would be close to the top of the list. Thanks, Darcy. I think honestly the um, the aspect to me is the complexities of the sewer system, sanitary sewer system in terms of how it's integrated and how it uh, manages and what is going to be required and we have some long-term aspects to it in terms of our sewage lagoons and the treatment of the sewage and uh, huge uh, implications down there, how we manage it and then the intricacy of engineering a system that helps ensure that the Crosby's or the Ezerds or Penny M's, the residents in our community don't experience this. And <clears throat> so to me, and that's kind of how I'm really thinking about it today is short term, we have these areas that we've identified in the community that are being impacted and we got to find a short term solution to minimize the risk for them however we can. And then put that long term planning mechanism in place that help this report helps us identify and move forward. and. <clears throat> the prioritization of uh, and that's why to me this whole thing about capital and why it's so important is 
this is a biggie to me as well, right, in terms of having had it twice this summer, those residents who impacted an experience that should never, never ever, w that's our goal of zero, right? It should be <coughs> the girls that work at the maternity ward don't go to work every day saying I get to drop one baby this month. Zero should be the expectation of sewage uh, uh, events and, and that should be our goal, right? We try to accomplish and get the, these um, fixed and so we got some short-term things that we can do and I really like the idea of uh, that pre-design of that uh, bypass and pump stations and then some of this sanator uh, the sanitary manhole sealing in those critical areas to try to help minimize that risk. So I really like the way it's moving forward and we just gotta, we just gotta prioritize it. Blair? Your Worship, I think it has been made clear certainly to myself and our senior team that this is a priority for Mayor and Council to get the sewer issue. So I would say, uh, Darcy, it, dealing with this going back a number of months, um, you know, it is very clear to us. The one thing with the recommendations, should the vote be adopted, I think is the a great move forward. We will do everything we can, should we see an event happen this spring, to do whatever we can to be ahead of that curve, without question, for the people. Because I too agree. I, I don't think you would find anybody that would ag not agree that people shouldn't have to deal with this in their homes, not once, but let alone two or three times. So. Um, we'll do it. One lift station alone to cover an area is better than two in, in the two and a half million dollar range. So as we move forward, this repair uh, and bringing it back the system to get working, should that be a requirement, just to put in context, is fairly significant dollars. The one thing with a sewer utility, they are self-liquidating utilities. So if there was a need, for example, to um, incur that kind of cost you can recover it through your sewer rates water and sewer rates and so on so a little flexibility there but a self-liquidating utility and we're in i wouldn't say tremendous shape but reasonable shape within our utilities go ahead first. thank you Mike. Um, is it like something that's possible to look at what the cost is to just get all the stuff done on the report sooner than later like instead of doing it over two or three years doing it over one year I think our challenge is we couldn't get it all done in one year. Oh, and there's there, that much to do. Yeah, there's that much, um, and Kevin would be better positioned. But I think the key part here is with the mains and the uh, work that they're going to do under the first recommendation the council's considering right now, we wouldn't want to go out and do things that we weren't confident were going to address the issue. You could spend two or three million dollars and find out that, oh, that wasn't your best two or three million dollars. So. 2021 is going to be a key year as we move forward with the changes we're putting in place. But again, this has been many, many years in the making and it's going to take a few years to get this back where we can have the comfort, as you said, for the people that live here. Councillor uh, Wilbert and Councillor Earl. Um, I just wanted to add to you that it's been quite the process, but also um, Councillor uh, Dober had mentioned like the, the roadways and stuff. Well, that all kind of inter locks with each other because we have infrastructure underneath those roadways so that's all being a uh, thought of part of the process and it's horrible that this is happening in our community but I just want to put out there that we're we're not alone we're we're in a unique boat of municipalities across the nation that have aged infrastructure and over time you know you see these breaking points so you know kudos to those that have come before us that have looked at this it's been an ongoing process but I just want to put out there that that road work as well as part is interlocked with this because like many other communities that's where our infrastructure is is under those roads and and I really feel for those people I, I hear from them all the time and it's horrible and I couldn't imagine having to have your basement done twice in a year um, we're getting there it, it is a priority and um, it isn't going to happen overnight and I, I just want to say thank you to staff for moving forward on all of these master plans that we have because they all interlock and and they're going to make a difference um, it's just not going to be tomorrow and and so we got to have patience and we just got to keep moving forward and I just want to put that out there because it's easy to complain it's not always easy to look at the bigger picture and I think that's what we're doing here is looking at the bigger the bigger picture thank you Councillor Earl yeah not too much to add your worship but obviously uh, echo all the sentiments around uh, when you see these letters like when we received today and ones we've received in the past it's gutting it, you know anyone who's a homeowner any anyone would be livid 
and beside themselves if they had to be put through what some of these folks have, have been through. So I, I don't, uh, and yet we do obviously have a responsibility to address it. Um, I, I do appreciate the suggestions in this report or the recommendations. And just to add to your point around the long-term strategy and the modeling, one thing we do need to keep in mind is a lot of our infrastructure and planning previously was done with uh, precipitation and runoff patterns from 50 years ago. Those, uh, if, if um, and I don't know if you've had the opportunity, Councillor Dober, to, uh, we received a very eye-opening report earlier this year from, was it folks at, not Urban City, it was, uh, but with respect to um, modeling moving forward of what those patterns look like and the fact that some of our planning may be obsolete, maybe have to be reconsidered at the very least. So that's one of the uh, that's one of the things we have to take into account as we move forward is balancing our desire to yeah, get it done, get it done as quickly as possible, fix it because if it were me, I'd be chaining myself to the front doors. Um, but we also need to make sure that whatever infrastructure we put in place is going to be sufficient for what it's our, our uh, weather patterns are going to look like in 10, 15, 20, 50 years. And that's one of the challenges we're, we're also faced with. Thank you. So um, we have the motion. Are you ready for the question? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, item 8 is bylaws. 8.1. We have our annual business license and regulation amendment bylaw number 4465-2020 for adoption. Councillor Duvacron? For adoption. Moved. Second. Councilor Kemp, all those in favor? Opposed? It's carried, thank you. 8.2, we have the bylaw notice enforcement amendment, bylaw number 4470-2024 adoption. Councilor Javetkoff, move, second. Councilor Earl, discussion? All in favor? Opposed, carried, thank you. And 8.3, which is the municipal ticket information system amendment, bylaw 4471-2024 adoption. Councillor Wilbur, second. Councillor Kemp, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, 8.4, we have the Highway Closure and Dedication Removal Bylaw number 4466 2024 adoption. Councillor Earl, second. Councillor Dober, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. <coughs> 8.5, we have land sale to Signature Ventures Incorporated, bylaw number 4467-2024, adoption. Uh, Councillor Wilbur, second. Councillor Jovetko, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. <coughs> 8.6, we have report number 2230 from the Chief Financial Officer regarding our 2020 to 2024 amended financial plan bylaw number 4473-2020. Councillor Parzal. Second. Councillor Wilbur. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. I recommend it. Oh, you did one and two. Okay. Um, let me catch up. And we have to do number three. Was number two. Number two. One and two. It <laughs> <laughs> was three in one document, but she's she was testing us. <laughs> I was going with three. <laughs> <laughs> Recommendation number two. The Councillor Earl, second. Councillor Dover. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. So much flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> she's testing. Who moved us. it? Yeah. The, the second one. Or the third one. The second one was moved by Earl, seconded by Dover. 8.7. Uh, we have report number 2231 from the Chief Financial Officer regarding the 2021 Revenue Anticipation Borrowing Bylaw number 4470-74-2020. Councillor Wilbur is moved. Second, Councillor Parzel. Discussion? Flavia, just our annual regular uh, bylaw that puts in place the uh, uh, Ability for us to uh, have a borrowing, uh, revenue borrowing, if required. Exactly. Right. Good. Thank you. And we have to have it in by, done by December 31st. Yes, to be available for next year. Yes. Can't do it on January 21st. 
Your, your Worship, I Go always ahead, like to uh, jump in. There are people, when you see a revenue anticipation borrowing bylaw, they think we're borrowing the money, and I know it was just said that we're not. Um, it's clear this is, we don't collect our taxes till mid-year, um, which, you know, in order for the city to run, we need the ability, we have uh, dollars that come in, but should you need dollars to run your city prior to your tax collection, this is what allows that to happen. It is rare that we engage in this, but it is not that the city's running out to borrow $18 million just to run the operations of the city. And, uh, you know, there are questions that come and fair questions when people read that. So just to be clear on that. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. And 8.8, .8, we have report number 20. Excuse to me, through your story. Worship, number two. We will need recommendation number two. Will we need to do number three? Number so three moved. <laughs> moved by <laughs> Councillor Wilbur, second by Councillor Gober. Discussion? <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> it's bad when you're getting it from your CFO that it's one, two, or three. <laughs> I'm sure Watch for typos in the next. <laughs> sure. That's the old worry about this. You have two sets of books or three. <laughs> um, 8.8, 8, we have report number 2227 from the city planner regarding our sign regulation amendment bylaw number 4472. Councillor Parslow. I'd like to move this for discussion. <laughs> Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Wilbur, go ahead. I'd like this, the uh, CAO to explain it to me. <laughs> I got totally confused reading this, this thing. So I'd like it in layman's terms. Okay. What's changing? So what we have done <laughs> is in the past council uh, when they, and Kevin, you're going to jump in and correct me when, I, <laughs> when or if I'm wrong on this. Uh, council made a determination that if a business went to a uh, electronic sign, that would be what they would have. Um, that would be it. They would then remove the uh, portable signs, as we understand it. Council then dealt with it again some time ago, received some letters uh, from some businesses that said, look, we don't think that's enough. Uh, we would like the electronic sign, plus we would like a number of portables. Council, in their discussion, decided that they would accept uh, uh, electronic sign and one portable uh, per, per um, business parcel. I'll call it a parcel because there are malls, for example, that have far more businesses than one. Um, so that is, and then there was a request that came back, said, well, and I'll give you an example, whether it be the co-op or Dawson Mall or somebody else's, well, our electronic sign and your ability to give us one elect or portable sign is not good enough. We need more. So at the last council meeting or the meeting before, council said we are going to accept variances in these cases. So what we would have is our bylaw would say you can have an electronic sign with one portable sign, which is in your bylaw. If you want more, council is going to look at those on individual basis based on variance allowances. Does that help at all? Yes, so if I can paint a picture. Yes. So we take the crop mull complex, what is a complex? We would have, they would be permitted to have one digital sign that would cover the entire property. They can have one movable sign they want five or six, let's say for each of the entities there, they would have to come before council. Yes. Mm. Councillor Jovekov. So, it was fairly clear to me, I had to read it a couple times, <laughs> what I didn't understand was what is a community... Obviously a superior reader. Than <laughs> what is a slave. community sign? Is that a, a sign that <laughs> is owned by the city? <clears throat> Three worship a community sign, I, th I believe, are the ones that we have in a few locations. There was one at um, the Safeway Liquor Store there that was advertising community events. Um, so it's it's not specific to that business. It's more about hey, there's a, a Christmas event at the Canada Event Center. Something there's those types of there was the one there. There was one I think down by 
uh, Inland Auto, Tim Hortons, down on 8th Street. Those are the two that jump to mind. So are those special um, applications then for every one of them to the, the city so the city approves where they go? For those community signs, yeah. yes. Okay. I, don't, I just I started thinking that the city was taking over placing all the signs in the city. <laughs> just our community signs. Oh, no. Advertising our community. <laughs> so, motion. We have a motion. Move no first director. three readings. Thank you. Second. Councillor Earl. Discussion? I'm almost afraid to ask. <laughs> 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 you know, so I, no, to be honest, no, no. I'm <laughs> biting my tongue. Are you ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Totally retired from this. Sign business. Um, item nine is mayor's business, and I uh, just have uh, um, really one item that I want to address, and uh, under nine point two, and it's a letter regarding the restorative justice uh, process that we went through in regards to the. Rainbow Sidewalk uh, that was uh, impacted this year um, as a result of a couple of different events. The RCMP, who spent a considerable amount of time uh, investigating um, the events of the um, what we'll call vandalism, vehicles spinning out and spray painting different um, things on the signs, and the RCMP uh, were successful in. Uh, um, uh, identifying one of the individuals involved in one of the events and um, so they uh, approached the city as well as the I think the Dawson Creek Pride Society and talked about going through a restorative justice uh, process with the individual rather than proceed to the courts for potentially criminal charges uh, for the action and the uh, young individual who was involved in it um, uh, wanted to proceed with the uh, process under a restorative uh, justice process and so we met with him um, and along with the RCMP and the Dawson Creek Pride Society and uh, we had a very good discussion with uh, the individual and talked about the consequences of actions and how the reputation of our community was impacted uh, by the event and the actions and certainly um, through that uh, process, we were uh, felt that it was um, really sincere that he was taking responsibility uh, for their actions, and that um, we agreed to a process. And so, individuals written a letter uh, to the city, and I want to read that to whom it may concern. I am writing this letter of apology regarding the incident that occurred on the Rainbow Crosswalk this past June. I am sorry that my actions caused there to be time spent by the RCMP and the city to deal with all the negativity caused by my actions. I hope that this has not created a large impact on the public view of the city. Thank you for the t your time and understanding. Um, and then the, the individual also wrote a letter of apology um, uh, that was sent to the Dawson Creek Pride Society and I want to read that as well. To whom it may concern. I am writing this letter of apology regarding the incident that occurred on the Rainbow Crosswalk this past June. I am sorry that my actions offended anyone or caused any hard feelings. My actions were that of a teenage boy not realizing how it would affect others or how it would make them feel. I hope you can please accept my apology to all affected by my actions. Thank you. Um, and the other piece of this is the individual has agreed to reimburse the city for, we, we think about $2,500 was the cost that we incurred as a result of um, repainting the, painting the sidewalk and repainting it and so the individuals agreed to reimburse one third of that. There were three separate events that caused the damage and so he, the individual has agreed to repay the city a third of those costs for $850 I think. Um, and so, you know, and so certainly we had some discussion about this and uh, really to me this is a real appropriate way to be able to handle an act of a young individual who made a mistake and he's owning up to that mistake he made and willing to accept the consequences of um, trying to make good on how it impacted um, the community and the 
Pride Society and the residents and the reputation of our community. And um, so, and we did indicate that as a result of that, we certainly would would be dealing with this in public. It was a very public event for all of us trying to respond to it. And so, um, so I want to take that opportunity to update Council. Councilor Parzel. Well, I've always been a fan of restorative justice practices, and I applaud all who've been involved in it, in following this. But uh, I, I don't know if you're in a position to answer this this question. Uh, uh, was it who facilitated this? Uh? So the RCMP were really the ones that approached Blair and uh, Blair and I talked right. about it, and were we willing to proceed through restor a restorative justice process right. with the, uh, the individual? and then also with the Dawson Creek Pride Society. And so it was really through the RCMP, the actions and the initiative of the RCMP. Well, I appreciate that as well, but um, where I'm get coming from here is, um, I'm not aware of it for Dawson Creek, but I'm aware of it through the role of some of my colleagues that in some parts of the province, <coughs> they seem to have a restorative justice council and, and a reservoir of t trained facilitators for, for doing this mm -hmm. thing so I'm just uh, one community that I know of uh, is, is Kelowna um, my friend there who lived in West Bank former school superintendent uh, the only reason I know about that is because he was heavily involved in it is it something that we need to to um, in liaison with the RCMP and others equip ourselves uh, with uh, we got some wonderful people who do a lot of mediation yeah. work uh, in our community because uh, I, I really like it. Young people make mistakes, all of us make mistakes uh, and uh, this is a much better way of, of dealing with them and also sometimes in cross-cultural issues particularly. Sure. Maybe we'll take that aside and Blair and I we can uh, talk to the RCMP about it and see if there's a formal process that we can find a way to adopt and we can certainly do that, Your Worship, yeah. and check to see if yeah. it's... We'll bring that back to Council. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's great Good. for the initiative, I think. Yeah. That's great. Councilor Rowe? Uh, one other thing I'd add, in addition to Charlie's sentiments, I'd certainly be, be happy to learn more about what our capacity is in the city with respect to restorative justice, but I'd also um, just highlight uh, the timeliness compared to um, had this particular issue worked its way through uh, our criminal justice system, court system, uh, I think we probably would have been hearing about the end result about two years from now, whereas um, a six month, it, comparatively, this is uh, a relatively timely response. And um, if, if your worship, on behalf of the city and the, the local Pride Society, are satisfied that this person's uh, sincere in their apology, I'm of mind with with everyone else I think is as we all do foolish inconsiderate things when we're young and that shouldn't um, define a person's life moving forward if, if they're willing to learn from their actions and take be accountable for them so uh, kudos to the RCMP for uh, providing the solution and I'm hoping the city can move on from this unfortunate incident thank you Blair? Your Worship, just for those that may be watching or reading the agenda, it is signed anonymous for the reason it is a young person uh, and by law, that's why. So it isn't somebody trying to be smart here and not put their name on. It's a requirement uh, put forward by the RCMP as well. So. Yeah, the, I think the, uh, to me, the uh, actions of the individual and along with his parents and putting some accountability and responsibility to their actions. And so I'm pleased uh, with the outcome. Thank you. Uh, nine three, we had the Dawson Creek Community Awards and we dealt with that under delegation, so we have no need to deal with that now. Is there a CAO update, Blair? Your Worship. Excuse me, Your Worship, oh. there's uh, the motion put forward through Council. Ah, I was gonna ignore that one. Councillor <laughs> 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 Hill. So we have Councillor Dover's uh, motion that we would direct administration to bring a report back to. Uh, deal with the implications of uh, the operational requirements to extend the hours of and at the pool and to review the rates uh, that we're currently charging at a reduced level. Councillor Dover? Um, to move a report forward, that would mean it would have to be the next? Yes. So is it possible to just move the rates up as of January 
first and then have a report on the hours? Because it's clear on the website that the reduced rates was very temporary. It says that right on there. Again, if you said we're already going backwards on that, why are we? And we're heavily discounting it right now. So through you, your worship to Councillor Dober, yes, it is. It would take a motion of council. So whether it be at this time, I would look for procedural, but it would take a motion of this board uh, to rec direct administration to change where we're at. And whether that was beginning on January 1st, for example, or a date chosen by this board, we could accommodate. Brenda? Um, through your worship, I'd, the motion that was uh, moved forward to this time was to return to the previous fees which would come into effect um, immediately after the motion was passed and then the secondary portion of the motion was to request the, the report. Okay. So um, probably it would be up to Flavia how soon that could become in effect. We should make sure that the bill is Ross because uh, with facilities uh, we have a different timing of changing prices so Thank you for your worship. I have to defer to my creation manager. <laughs> 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 I mean, it would be a matter of, um, of uh, informing staff putting the fees together formally. Yeah. Communication plan. So right now we do registered swims. So pretty well the last next two weeks are already paid for. So the fees would be best to be January 2nd if we were going to increase them as of January 2nd because we haven't uh, added those swims yet. Go ahead, Councillor Dover, and then Councillor Wilbur. Uh, just one thing, like I think, you know, I think it was a good idea to discount the swimming, but you know, now people, that's the new expectation. So I, that's why I thought like having the hours discussed at the same time, it's easy to be like, the rates are going back up, but we've extended the hours. And um, I think recently, just like in the last couple days, the hours have been increased, correct? For your, for your worship, yes. yeah, I, I didn't think we had amended the hours. Uh, the hours are being amended as of Christmas hours. So they're going to 1.45, like 1.75 okay. for Christmas. Um, when we moved into phase, back into phase two, we decided the best time for us to increase the hours would be at Christmas time. Um, and then what happens is, is that what will, what's not open right now will be the steam room, the hot tub, the hot school, and we still don't have the showers yet. But when we, when we put those fees in for reduced fees, it was because we had limited hours and limited services. So as of January, we're hoping that we will need to get up to move, keep moving maybe to the showers. Oh, for more services. Now, we can get to that area, people are still have to come in, and then they have to leave with another shower, but we do have change. And the sauna and steam room will be a while before we can open the up. Yeah. And the hospital as well. But the slide and the diving boards and the They've done a great job there, by the way. I've been there a few times, so thank you. Okay, thank you. Blair? Just for clarity, so with the motion before us, and Brenda, is what I've just heard is the motion says immediately if this motion was adopted, the fees would change. I've just heard a uh, comment from administration that would be better for January 2nd. So. Is that going to require an amendment by the mover? Uh, I just want to make sure we're clear as we leave this. Brenda? Yeah, through your worship. The motion was just to return to the previous fees. There was no indication on the date, so just a clarification okay. on the date. So, with so the, the uh, date of January 2nd would be the most effective, earliest implementation of a rate change because of the prepayment of some of our programs already. Darcy? I just, my thought was if we waited till January 23rd for a report that you know, winters here are pretty long, so we're already going to be you know, a month into the winter where families and people in our community are looking for something to do. So it's I think there's two things, Your Worship. We cannot bring a report back any sooner than that for yeah. the extended hours of which we can do, uh, and then it'll be up to Council for the, your consideration. The amendment to the fees uh, is doable should this motion pass we'll do that on January 2nd and bring the report back on the 21st so should we wait till January 23rd to do the fees as well just so that you know if we're gonna change the hours people are gonna get something for paying the, the uh, that's price? certainly a, a council decision your worship Councillor Wilbur um, 
I just, I just want to, I would like to wait because one, Dr. Henry's extended everything past Christmas and to the new year. We don't, it's like putting ice in another arena and then everything gets shut down and you're back to skills and drills. And I think we need to take a little bit slower and wait. And I know there are families out there um, that used to have two parents working that are not. And I know that we have limited amount of service that we're offering them. So, you know, I hope the ski hill gets going and people can do that. And there are some things out there, but this is something that we can provide to the community. They do have to book the time. Um, I'm happy with as it is. And just to extend that a little bit longer, I would rather wait till the end of January and find out what's going to happen provincially. Uh, I think the Christmas holidays are going to be a telltale sign of the decisions that are going to be made provincially. Um, which is out of our hands and so I think um, we need to see what that is I'm I realize that with the re you know the decrease in the fees it's it's on our end we're putting more in but at the same time it's a service to the community that they can utilize and they're enjoying and I think our families need that so um, I personally would like to wait till end of January and then review this knowing um, we don't know what's going to happen over the holidays so I, I hope everyone stays home, wears masks, wash their hands, but I'm not sure that that's going to be the case. And I think we're going to be held um, at a provincial decision, whether it's happened in our community or not. Thank you. Um, Councillor Parslow. Well, I, I had a different understanding of uh, Darcy's motion than our esteemed corporate officer. I didn't think any of it was going to be actionable, but I'm not, I would never challenge Brenda. Me either. No. <laughs> but um, I, I think, uh, I, you know, it's half a dozen of one, you know, it doesn't. But what I would like if we are going to have a report, and I've asked for this once before, um, I know we are a self-governing body, but I'm always interested and I find it useful to know what other municipalities are doing. I have yet to find another municipality, and I'm not saying there aren't any of it, and it doesn't matter about our decision, because we have the authority to make whatever, that reduce their fees by 50%. I don't know, I haven't found one, but I've only maybe five uh, friends in five different communities who go swimming, they, they have reduced ours, but they still pay the same fee. But that's regardless, I think it is probably uh, wise to wait and have a proper report. Well, I'd like to know what's going on, in this, particularly our northern communities uh, with, with swimming. I, I do agree that uh, we, we have a wonderful facility there and it is important to, uh, to have some recreation for people. But I just can't help but say that, that one more thing about recreation. There was an interesting program on the community of Yellowknife this morning. Did any of you see that? How the community volunteers have set up, and I forget the number, is 11 sheets of ice outside. Uh, there are five or so many hockey rinks, and th they had, vis you know, th they had uh, images of all that. And uh, I just, just thought, wow, what a community. Volunteers doing all that stuff uh, to enable some form of recreation to happen. So hats off to Yellowknife, but uh, there we've got people, you know, contained by COVID in a northern community. Uh, maybe we can, can we not uh, see if some people would like to get the, uh, what I call the Julian Neal Memorial Arena open again, or wherever else there's a boarded outside potential skating uh, hockey area. I, I only know of one, there used to be many. Uh, do you know of any more outside mm -hmm. ones? No, just the one. Thank you. So um, the motion is that we're going to revert back to uh, previous rates and a report will be brought back on January 21st. That's the motion. That's the motion. I don't, I think I can like remove the motion if I can because I think I'd rather wait till the report comes. So you want to remove the requirement to um, the um, rates for January 2nd? Yeah, because I kind of wanted to look at it as a whole. I wasn't meaning change the rates today. I just you know, one personally, ten dollars for a family of six to go is okay. doesn't make sense. So, Brenda, we um, as the mover, can we change that? He can't change it. It's on the floor. It's owned by the. It's on so by the. Just, so we have to just or just make an amendment. Yeah. We can make an amendment to the. We can either amend it or um, what has been done in the past is 
uh, council may wish to just defeat the motion defeat and, and start fresh. Sure. Okay, Councilor Earl. Oh, I was going to make. Okay. Let's do. Uh, All right. Let's so we'll the motion is that um, rates on January second and a report coming on January twenty first for the Aquatic Center. All those in favor? Opposed? It's defeated. <laughs> Councilor Dober. <laughs> Want to make another one? Can you make, can you make your motion on the same time? Yeah, just with an amended date. So you want to make the motion, same motion on the rates and the report. The report would deal with the rates and hours and the hours on January twenty first. Changes the intent. It's a new motion. This is an amendment. This is a new. <laughs> Brenda, is it appropriate? I believe so. Yeah. Oh, I, I, oh, but I we're under the so this is under that. mayor's business as well, right? Yeah. So it was defeated. It's certainly let's have the let's have the motion. I'm going to accept it. Councillor okay. uh, Dober, second. Councillor Earl, that we're going to have a report brought back on January 21st with a recommendation for the rates and the hours for the Kenbork Aquatic Center. Councillor, uh, it was moved by Councillor Dober, seconded by Councillor Earl. Go ahead, Councillor Earl. Uh, I was just going to add if that report as to uh, Councillor Parzlow's point could involve any comparatives with other rural northern communities uh, around what they did with their rates or if there was any deviation from what we did or we were the loan. Just yeah. any insight into that, just so we're not. Ross. Yes. Thank you, Your Worship. Just a note that staff, uh, I would suggest, almost weekly are on a conference call with the BC Recreation and Parks Association and doing just that. Talking about what are you doing, what are your rates, what's open, what's not open, um, and in fact um, have that information. There are Google worksheets that we work off of and see so we can uh, fairly easily Good. Thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Well, that was easy. That was easy. Darcy's fault. I'm Blair, anything? Uh, no, Your Worship. We've covered everything. No. And, uh... Consent calendar? Motion to. Accept consent, Councillor Parcel, Councillor Kemp. All in favor? Post carried. Anybody want to lift anything from the consent calendar? Yes. Councillor Parcel? The Chief Administrative Officer Operational Update, there's none? There was uh, nothing okay. new to report. Sorry. We've covered everything under the reports okay. we've put forward today. Oh, that's Are you sure? Strategic priorities, um, nothing new. We're going to. Nothing at this afternoon. point. We have a meeting this afternoon. Yep. Media? Uh, motion to recess to closed. Councillor Wilbur, Councillor Kemp, all in favor? Post carry. Thank you guys. So we'll take five minutes and go to close. Did we bring